Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome ladies and gentlemen, a Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See some sundown burst into yin and yang, green and that's me. What's cracking you guys? Welcome to the Tatness Podcast. Today's show, my god. Oh my, where do I begin? <laughs> Mick Strawn returns. And we pick up right where we left off with the ball busting. But he's not alone. He brought his buddy, Nick Benson, who you may not realize did the effects for movies like Tremors and The Blob. And those two are currently working on a film right now together called The House in the Pines. And with me, I brought in an old friend from way back in high school... Ann McGillis, who has her own landscaping business, and she just thought Mick was so damn hilarious on the first show that she, you know, was such a fan of his hilarious ass that I said, why not come on? Uh, Let's do this together, and you can get in on this entertainment. So she jumped on it, and we had a blast. Let me just tell you, the ball busting is unreal. It never ends. Uh, And by the sounds of it, you think Mick and I hate each other, but it's quite the opposite. I love that guy, man. Uh, it's all in fun. And everyone that knows me knows that if I bust your balls, it's because I love you, man. I, I care about you. If I, if I don't razz you, then I, I'm just not interested in uh, knowing you, really. Um, not to sound terrible or anything, but that's just how I am. So if I bust your chops, man, it's because I dig you. So I hope you guys dig this. It was pretty hilarious. And I busted out a special shirt just for him that you guys can't see unless you go to my YouTube channel when the video is posted. But it's a little bit of a rebuttal to uh, something that he wrote in my copy of the book that he wrote. And it's my my shirt that says, I shaved my balls for this. <laughs> and uh, he appreciated it. Check it out, bro. All right, motherfuckers. First of all, especially you, you fuck. You sent me a copy of your book. Yeah, fuck you. And your little fucking message told me to stop sending you sex toys. <laughs> so, you, you just know that I have a response for you. Oh, yeah, oh, really? <laughs> oh, you know I fucking do. And it's how I feel every damn time you get off my fucking show. So. <laughs> so, there we go. The people that are watching my YouTube. Oh, oh, for me? For me? <laughs> Don't you feel fucking special? Oh, how I spoil you. <laughs> Goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> this is how everything gets started with Nick. And I love it. Yeah. I couldn't have it any other fucking way. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> How the fuck anyone still listens to my show, all three of those people? I don't never understand. Yeah, listen. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I would love to insult each and every one of you, <laughs> but he only remembers, you know, he doesn't even know how to spell your names. <laughs> That's right. That's fucking right. It's fucking- Nobody can spell my name right. Everybody yeah. puts any unit every time. Never fails. Hi, Anne. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you, Mick. Good to meet you. Yeah. So I, can, I, can, I can tell that you're Anne because your name is right here. <laughs> read. Because I can read. You went to school and stuff. <laughs> At a third grade level, but he can read no less. <laughs> hey, a win's a win, right? I, I got to the point of being able to actually read without things falling out of my mouth. <laughs> Fuck me. That that's the secret. But yet he spelled my fucking name wrong in the book, and it was probably on purpose too, just to spite me, the bastard. Oh, I, see. Oh, I don't even ask. Hey, you know what? <laughs> the fact that I actually even tried to imitate the word Keith is pretty <laughs> amazing because usually I just rename people. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, I have re- no honest guy. I've renamed like twenty people. I don't fucking. You, no, you know what? You're Brendan now. 
<laughs> hey, it could be worse. It could be. I, I, I've actually done that. I've like had people no, uh -uh. or or I've or I've written it or I've written it to their dog instead. Yeah. Some people. You have written them to the dog. I have. I yeah. You see me do it. I've written it to his dog. Yeah. Hey, what's the name of your dog? People come up. And they go, hey, you, you saw your book? That's great. Will you sign it? And I go, yeah, what's the name of your dog? <laughs> He's done that a few times here. I've <laughs> done that a few times here, yeah. No what's doubt. the name of your dog? This is why we what get along. Dog? You got any dead pets? <laughs> <laughs> I might if they I'm going to write it to your favorite dead childhood pet. I do. I have a dead dog. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I would be honored to have a book autographed to my dead dog by you, Nick. Well, there you go. You know, it, it's you know what I it's the hearts of the hearts of the hearts and minds. That's the way I see it. Hearts and minds. She okay. just knows. Yeah, dead hearts and minds. Yeah, exactly. She just knows. She, she'll take it signed to her dead dog because she's gonna bury it next to him rather than read the fucking thing. <laughs> hey, listen, guys. I wanted to introduce you. Uh, uh, this is Nick Benson. How's it going, uh, man? Yeah, Hi. Yeah been a friend for uh, uh god for fucking ever and um uh we were uh i i pulled him i i pulled him into this mess which is like going around uh places in philadelphia a place that i really love <laughs> especially the roads especially the roads out here you know it's it's like and the trash Oh yeah, dude. You know what? You know the thing is, is this: is if you're gonna do something, then you should be really good at it. And the thing is, is these people have actually taken it upon themselves to create the biggest, the best potholes on the fucking planet. <laughs> they are canyons. Yes. You know what? You know what we call them back. You know what we call them uh, in the West? The fucking Mariana Trench. That's what we call them. Yeah, no, we have gigantic potholes here for sure. Yeah, yeah my, my God, it's like an it, it, it's like an art form, and oh. throwing trash around. You know, it, it's like what is Phil? What are Phil? Philadelphians are good at dirt, uh, <laughs> potholes, uh, uh, you know, differences in floor level in in, uh, in levels on the freeway. <laughs> you know, this this is not a transition. It's a jump. Just saying. Just start building a ramp. But other than that, I've had a really lovely time. <laughs> no <doubt. laughs> I, I'm sure in spite of how in every sport Philadelphia teams love getting punched in the head, uh, they, they probably <laughs> still can detect your sarcasm. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's not lost on them. <laughs> You know what? That's the problem with America. All the sarcasm detectors are made in Japan. <laughs> Taiwan, maybe. Taiwan, yeah. So in all these countries and, and states. Hey, you see, states, see, 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 I fooled you. You thought that was going somewhere. Right. And in, in fucking all these countries and all these states that listen to my show officially don't anymore. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, hey, how many have I driven away now? <laughs> well, I have... you keep having me back. You know what? You're, you're working your way to zero. Well, yeah. I mean, it was fifty percent the first time. I had to bring you back to finish the job. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't do a good enough job the first time. Around. Right. You know, he had to bring help, and I was like, "For fuck's sake!" That's because you keep getting cut off at forty minutes. Right. <laughs> I can only do so much. Nick and Nick, you could write a limerick. Well, you know, you know what it was actually. I've never had a problem with Zoom. It's where they're like this fucking guy again, so they cut me down. They're like, we're we're gonna tolerate him for forty minutes, and that's it. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it, it it cuts down my pain at least. <laughs> Zoom has had enough of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Small so, dope. So, well, I'm gonna tell you a little story. I want to tell you a little story. It's a uh, it's a, it's about a a, a a group of friends that um, that uh, go on a vacation and they, they go out into the pines into the pines and they run into ghosts 
uh, they run into flames. Um, there's a, 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 a guy that talks to a monkey. Um, what else have we got in this? We got uh, no flaming monkeys. Well, not yet. Not yet, anyway. That's a good idea. <laughs> Chinese food, uh, acid. Um, uh, just it, it, the list goes on and on and on, and it's all involved in a movie called The House in the Pines. And you would not believe how good it is that I actually can remember that today. You have no idea. <laughs> We're doing we're doing like a promotional tour, and, and I can't remember the name of the film all fucking day long. Speaking to <laughs> like thirty fucking people, okay. This guy speaking to around thirty fucking people cannot remember the name of his own film. I right. no, just just I'm doing a film. Uh, that's exactly me. And, 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 and he's he's like two people away from me and he's trying to push the person next to him. So he'll push the ne person next to him and so he'll push the person going, No, I was still away from you. House in the Pines! <laughs> I, I could see that. I could understand that completely. Yeah, I'm doing this movie. There's some fucking trees and shit, uh, you know. In, shit. In the yeah, there's this trees and shit. There's some dumb kids that get killed. Yeah, I have no fucking idea. What yeah, it. yeah. It's, you know, you'll be able to find it. Dumb <laughs> kids. They're in, the, they're in a forest-like thing. It's a bunch of trees. Uh, there's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. fires. Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. You, you can find it. Right. You just Google it. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. So what you been up? So what you been up to? Jesus Christ, man! It's like three guests a day usually. Um, I, I, I fucking, you know. Uh, better than anybody losing track of shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. three guests a day. I thought I, th I thought we were special. I, I did too. And then you fucking spelled my name wrong in your book, damn it. So <laughs> I felt betrayed. I think he thinks we are special. We're just window liquor special. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a helmet. So I mean, right there. Actually being, <laughs> being, yeah, being towed, being towed behind the small bus special. You know. <laughs> Skiing behind the small bus. Uh, one, day, I, one day I had two guests. You know how it is to fucking forget your schedule and shit. And I did two shows and I thought I'm done. And then I get a PR fucking agent message. Um, don't forget, you know, fucking uh, Joe Castro. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what time? Oh. I, five minutes. I'm like, for fuck's sakes. All right, I got this. And so I send him. The you want to hear Joe Castro showing? Yeah, man. I love that guy. You want to hear Joe sorry? Yeah, he's a good friend, man. <laughs> this isn't a bad one. Uh, well, it is, no, but yeah, no dirt. I don't give a fuck. It's, so, so Joe Castro is, is working on Vengeance, right? And they're, they're kind of uh, in the, they're in this one room and I'm walking around, you know, like doing first AD shit and production designer shit. You know, first AD and production designer shit. Right, and I and I and I go in and I just want to sit down and relax for a minute. And right across from me, they're trying to fill the body. They're they're trying to like fill the body and the head of of uh, of Voorhees, right? Yep. You know, or or no, it's not Voorhees. It's um Jason's uh, other uh, uh, his other character that he plays in there. But but they're gonna rip his head off, right? Okay. And and so what they're doing is they're they're trying to like attach stuff to the skull so that as he pulls the head out, yeah, you know, this is a normal conversation, right? You oh, know that, right? Yeah, typical. So as he pulls the head up and throws it over his shoulder, they had a string of guts and and like pieces of fat and bits and they pull it up and I'm just sitting there uh, uh, looking looking at go. The fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> they, and, and Joe Castro looks up and he goes, "What? What?" I go, "Look, this is this is gonna look stylish. You're gonna get like 18 inches of just the spine. You're just gonna glop it all up, and that's what you're gonna pull it out because we want it to look like that. It's it kind kind of I wanted that board." Like, you know, like just that 
chicken, uh, chicken spine, chicken spine, right? Mm-hmm. I, I wanted that look, you know, just the, 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 the head. Obviously, it's turned out that it ended an argument that had been going on for approximately, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something <laughs> like that. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> I mean, right? You know, comes so up. That, that's my joke story. But then, but then we... But then we had a great time with him on set. He was a lot of fun. Yeah, Joe's You're frozen, and it kind of looks like you're sucking cock. Oh, just looks like? <laughs> <laughs> you, you keep freezing in this position. Oh, shit. Yeah, Joe's a good dude, man. I love him. He's a friend of mine, and, uh, you know, thankfully that yeah, day, that. yeah, that day he was like, dude, I just fucking woke up 20 minutes ago, so I didn't feel so bad, and I was <laughs> 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 but uh jimmy star friend of mine as well uh pitched to me the idea he's like you're six foot fucking five 265 a muscle why the fuck are you not a serial killer in a horror movie and i was right. like you know second the opportunity comes up bro i'm on it he's like well we need to make this happen then so then i thought okay maybe i'll get joe castro to do a badass fucking mask or something like maybe like a, a ball sack in a snowstorm or something you know what i mean <laughs> Well, one of the main, not to say that you don't have the qualifications, but one of the main killers for our movie is uh, is six inches high. <laughs> yeah, that's why there's the mask, bro. <laughs> and he's not attached to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes I think to myself that you don't quite know what to do when I'm around. <laughs> I love it. Wouldn't have it any other fucking way. Maybe I'll be the first horror killer to just beat people to death with rubber dicks. There you go. <laughs> oh, gotta, gotta do something that's never been done, right? Yeah, that's right. What's the name of that dick? Cereal. <laughs> it's a cereal killer. Well, that's what uh, Ron Attack Russell said. Dick. That's what Ron Russell said. He's like, yeah, get you in a horror movie where you just club people with your fucking dick. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> fucking ron every time is it, it, is, it, it haven't they haven't they already made a film about killer mosquitoes probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> 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 poor Anne is like i don't know any of these yeah buddy poor Anne's like i don't know any of these people you fucking hollywood dicks <laughs> I got my daughter. i'm good <laughs> but, but she found you so damn entertaining the first time you were on so i had to bring her on so she could fucking witness your shit that you pull every okay. time Anne, Anne, yeah. don't just sit there <laughs> pull a question in. let's go you, you know you want to ask a question what? Tell me what the name of that robot was again. What was that robot's name? Oh, Astrid. 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 Yeah, no, that thing was definitely freaky. Definitely. Yeah, yeah you know, the thing is, is uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that I was setting up to, like, scar fucking generation after generation of Canadians. I mean, not that it would have stopped me. Don't get me wrong. Certainly. Scaring entire populations is something that I consider as kind of a little mea culpa. So it was just like collateral damage from what you were already doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I brained my damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so like, I, I feel like what you do is like mostly an art, right? Because you're designing a lot of the, the way it's gonna look after it's a finished product. I don't know, I've, not, I've, not, I've worked a little bit in film myself, but only as a child. Now I'm in trade, yeah. right? And I've known yeah. a few people that have worked in the film industry because there's a lot of film industry around here. I live in Vancouver. Well, I like to live in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, 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 you. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that going on. They do a lot of filming. Sometimes you watch movies and you're like, wait, that's the that's the Lionsgate Bridge. I drive over that every day. It's crazy. It's or, or as like it, uh, 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 as we like to call it, clean New York. 
<laughs> it's mostly, mostly porn that's being filmed, though. She's not telling you that part. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. After they busted that Nexium cult here, it's probably very well true. There you go. <laughs> Has, that was a bright, shiny moment for Vancouver in the last five years. You know, uh, J v Vancouver is is where great L.A. pilots go to die. You know that, right? <laughs> I've never heard that one before. You're hearing it here first. <laughs> Why is that? It's it's because we do pilots in L.A. now, and and, and then when they get picked up, they uh, go to uh, Vancouver and get marginalized so that we don't have to do it ourselves. Oh, I see. I heard, I'm heard. i hearing that uh, New York and California are the two places that are experiencing a mass exodus in the United States right now. So apparently it might not be as dirty as it was. Well, you know what? I, I'm in Nashville and I can't tell right now, so. <laughs> it's probably a good place to be. It, it, it's very hard. To make me feel bad about anything, by the way, very, yeah. very, very hard. Very, uh, you know, I, 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 I consider myself fair game. Bring yeah. it, bring it on. I thought it was. I fun, mean, I thought it was fun size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One for who? <laughs> I didn't shave my balls because just five minutes and tweet pair of tweezers would do just fine. I didn't shave mine because I don't actually have it. <laughs> sorry, I was uh, speaking Philadelphia there for a minute. Ay, 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 you shit. I'm an Eagles fan, so I understood it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. I don't know about Vancouver, but I believe every word you say about that shit in movies. Oh, God. And large. In my view, Vancouver couldn't sell pussy to a fucking sailor on shore leave, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. We've got a lot of shore. We have a lot of sailors. There's a, there's a large nautical culture out here, so I, I don't get very much. <laughs> isn't, isn't Vancouver kind of um, uh, Hong Kong uh, West now? Yeah, there are oh, Hong Kong of, East. Sorry, a lot of Asian people living here because we're on the Pacific Ocean, right? So you can fly direct. Well, yeah, and, and also they they've they've accepted you know people who are trying to get out of Hong Kong because it's uh, essentially uh, being inserted inside of China's. Yeah. And there was also, because of the uh, Fukushima, when that happened, a lot of people were leaving Japan. Yeah, oh, really? Well, they were being, um, what's it called? Called to leave their homes. Uh, not excavated. Uh, they, they were, because some of the areas were so badly torn with nuclear waste, they were asked to leave. And so a lot of people just left the country, right? You, you, you know why that is, right? It, it, that's because just like Ringo Starr's grandpa, it's very clean. <laughs> now you're going to have to go back a long way to catch that reference. Fukushima, listen to the potty mouth on end. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> no, no, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of people, I noticed that. I made a, I made a lot of friends because I actually took a certification to teach English as a foreign language. I didn't end up doing that as a job, but since there are a lot of uh, people that live here that are not first English speakers, like Vancouver, is, nobody's from here. It's really weird. It's kind of a city of travelers. A lot of people just go through. And so I have a knack to being able to communicate people with people who are not, don't have a great handle on English, right? And so, so a lot of people told me they were coming out of Japan like five and six years ago because they couldn't live there anymore because they were told to leave their homes anyway. A whole lot of Fukushima. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great exactly. restrooms. So, so, so because of that particular accident, exodus, um, are, are your toilets talking to you now? <laughs> no, they don't. See, now I've got this conversation back on a fucking right track, all right? I got, I got my head back in the toilet where it belongs, and I want you to join me. Well, who the fuck asked you to take it out in the first place, Dan? <laughs> we got to get you a bidet for Christmas, Mick. <laughs> Spend all day in there. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion water isn't the only thing Mick wants fired up his ass. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's that's so personal. 
such hostility. You know what? You know what? You really took that. You really took that book signing personally, didn't you? I mean, you know, devastating. Yeah, that's. I, you know, that's that's good. It's 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 good to have those angry feelings and let them out now and then. I loved it. I thought it was great, man. I thought that was the funniest shit. I was like, I should just send him a fucking rubber dick or something now, just. To fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that I have received a couple of weird things in the mail oh, no after doubt. I've sent my books out. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I really have, you know? And the thing is, is uh, I've gotten, I've gotten to, the, you know, those, uh, you know, those trash picker uppers. <laughs> yeah. They will open up packages. <laughs> <laughs> that, do you get like bomb threats and shit too? Like you probably piss some people off with this shit. <laughs> I've seen some of these messages. Hey, I'm better than that, you know? <laughs> he's uh, upgraded to anthrax. He's gotten worse than bomb threats. <laughs> yeah. That's how good he's gotten. That's right. That's good. Anthrax envelopes and shit. <laughs> he's bringing it back. <laughs> Fucking guy. You know, yeah. Mick's the one I, I asked for, and Mick was like, it's a package deal, motherfucker. I'm coming with him. I'm like, fine. <laughs> so you should be fucking honored that I'm putting up with this shit to have you on. <laughs> yeah, you should be honored. <laughs> <laughs> I swear yeah, to God. First, I don't believe that. I just got told where I would need it to be. Yeah. <laughs> you need you to know, go here. Okay. You, you know how I work things, right? <laughs> be in my room in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And then we'll do the show. <laughs> and then we'll do it. And, and then it, it, you know what? It's it could break out into a fist fight. It could break out into a podcast. You just never know which way it's gonna go. And you know what? Sometimes, just like this, it breaks out into both. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't see any black eyes or anything yet. What the fuck? You're letting me down, man. Somebody throw a headbutt on camera. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you didn't say brown eyes. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I entirely misunderstood the question. <laughs> I mean, the show ain't over yet, trust me. Before yeah, well, it ends, I'm sure I'll fucking see something. God, I'm telling you, 40 minutes just goes on and on and on. Holy shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, you're like just past the halfway point? Oh, my God, I've been hitting hemorrhoids that I enjoyed more than this. <laughs> and this is why he wanted to voluntarily come on again because he, <laughs> he can't abuse me properly in writing so that's, that's right. <laughs> it'd be a whole fucking book of it though. it just wasn't enough that's right <laughs> it, it would require an actual entire book not just the inside cover so <laughs> probably working on that in his spare time yeah, yeah. It's just called Fuck That Guy. <laughs> yeah, Fuck That Guy. And the rest of Canada, too. <laughs> I should write a book called that. Fuck That Guy. And the son of a bitch would still write on the inside cover something derogatory to add to it. Too, no, no, sure. no. no. What, what, what I would do is I would write a book called Fuck That Guy, and then I'd be really surprisingly, shockingly sweet on the inside, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. save it all for the second book. Fuck that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he'd really let me have it. The sequel that tells the rest of the story. <laughs> right. The first page would be about, or first chapter would be about how the first book was all bullshit and sarcasm, and uh, anything. Yeah, I told, I, I told that. you that this guy'd be fun, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he so, lied to you. <laughs> We are, uh, so so we've been doing uh, uh, these uh, events, you know, um, which I, you know, I, I don't know people people that would have me actually sign something, but 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 I have a book to sign, you know, and th and the thing is is that us being crew members, uh, when people walk by, they can recognize all the people that are around us, you know, like Toy Newkirk, and 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 then uh, it, it, and. And I can't, you know, Mark Patton, you know, and right down the line. And then there's, you know, Mick Strawn and Nick Benson. And so I have to hunt people down, you know. They'll go by and they'll actually go to their booth. And and, and gets up and brings them back. And I get up and pull them back and, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm literally, and you know that this happens. And I'm sitting, like, people are like 30 feet away. 
And the thing is, he has to sit next to me because people are like 30 feet away and they don't know. They, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> no, you. You. Yeah, you and a bitch are standing next to him. Come here. You did that at the drive I, I did that at the drive in, right? You know, it's like, and here's the thing is I'm 100% sure that they just give me $40 and take the book so that they can go away. You know, it's like, it, it, it's like, it's very <laughs> They walk away like the homeless are very aggressive out here. <laughs> <laughs> they got their panhandle went down to a business, LLC. <laughs> That's exactly what they think, you know? And, and, and you know what? Here's the thing. This is what I like to think. I like to think that at least they're saying to themselves, Oh, for, for 40 bucks, I made it out with my life. <laughs> this guy's not going to follow me home. This guy's not going to follow me home. He doesn't know what car I came in, do they? Do, does he? Except you did. I, I did. <laughs> except for, you know, I know what car you drive. I am going to be scouring the internet for stories now. Of so I went to this thing, and this guy charged me 40 bucks and tried to sign my taint. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, screaming at me and shit. <laughs> it was hey, terrific. Hey, that's sixty bucks. Oh no doubt. <laughs> to sign the tank, you know. Tank what it used to be. Tank what it used to be. Tank <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna get any better either. <laughs> How in the fuck my show ended up number ten out of the top fifty in the world this year is beyond me because it's shit like this. <laughs> it's shit like this. Really? Hey, hey, mister, literally, I'm going to knock you down a peg or two. There's obviously... Some, hey, number 12! There's going to be some sick people out there that fucking enjoy this shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't you, don't, don't you have an actual life? You know, we all need counseling, apparently. Oh, my God. Oh my God! Right now, Anne is like seriously reevaluating her life choices. Just you know, you know what? Here. What I what I should honest to God, honest to God, what I should do is come on your show with a therapist. Do it right. The yeah. therapist would leave needing therapy. The, <laughs> right. Then at I, the end of the show, yeah, yeah. It, it and the the climax of the show is I give her, you know, uh, my deductible. <laughs> They would leave with a hairdo like Hulk Hogan, just like <laughs> tearing it out till there's yeah. a pulse spot. <laughs> totally traumatized. Wait, wait, they, those sessions good. always in like that, right? We should get right? we should get Doctor Phil on. <laughs> We're gonna leave wear marks on you. Yeah, that's session. right. <laughs> <laughs> Get Dr. Phil on the first sentence out of his mouth to be, what in the fuck is wrong with the two of you? <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> Where you know did what? assholes find each other? <laughs> a, a little flag came up just a second ago and, and said, you've now been upgraded to unlimited time. And the first thing I thought was, what the fuck? Oh, God. <laughs> the, the amount of despair that wiped over my soul. So I it was like... <laughs> I told you Zoom has it out for you, bro. <laughs> Unlimited time. My God. Now, do you not been listening to this? This is, if this doesn't hurt your soul, you are a hard ass criminal. Well, it looks like I'm doing time then because I'm getting <laughs> fucking started, motherfuckers. <laughs> so, so, you know that as, as the leader of this, whatever this is, um, at some point, you you should ask another question. Now, I let I let Ann ask one. So, Keith, for the first time in this podcast that we are like twenty eight minutes into, uh, ask a that's fucking question. Ask a fucking question. Okay. Do your job. You have one job. First of all, I don't mean to get all professional on you when you say whatever this is. You know, the term, you notice you notice how he did he. He dips his head down when he gets professional, like he's sucking <laughs> cock. First of all, whatever this is, the professional term is called clusterfuck. 
<laughs> yes, I, I will also accept dumpster fire. That okay, was, dumpster was, fire, yeah. Fire. Or, 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 uh, or Trump's uh, presidential term. <laughs> yeah, there, or, you know. He, no, it's not nearly that fucked up. You, you, well, I'm working on it. Give me some time. It's only been a year. <laughs> I haven't had four like he has. Thank you. Yeah. Now, for the question then, since you insist, why are you such a dick? <laughs> <laughs> There's your question, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I I come to my penis by uh, naturally. Uh, uh, it's it, it's an art, it, you know. It's it's more of like an artisanal fuck you, than it, than it than it is. It's not a mass produced. It's not like you're painting with it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's 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 a it's it's like an art. Yes, it's very poetic. I'll give you that. So my yeah, question then now is for you. How the fuck do you put up with this shit, man? <laughs> I've had 40 years to learn this motherfucker's problem. <laughs> I don't know why, but somehow I wind up vestigial to him. Vestigial. Ah, you see? You use. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold on one second. Vestigial. Who do you think used that word first two days ago? Wow. Now, spell right. it. Right. Yeah. And I laughed my ass out because nobody else fucking got it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a public word. Anyone can use it. Yeah, there you go. You know what? It's it, not only do I insult you, I insult you, and you have to fucking look it up on Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick, I got a question. What's what is the weirdest thing you ever received in the mail? You got me going. I'm curious. In the mail? In the mail. Wow. What is the weirdest thing I have ever received in the mail? Well, you uh, have that about you send your book you get weird shit back in the mail so now i want to know <laughs> you know a, a long time ago uh i was working on a show at we were talking about this uh, the, the 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 foam brothers foam, oh, foam magic uh just these two guys had the, now this is great i i gotta set up who these guys are these uh like what would you say is like together their bind, combined height was uh Four foot like fucking eight. Yeah, four foot eight. I think standing standing on top of each other's shoulders. <laughs> they were about four foot eight, um, and they 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 sprayed spray foam, right? Which is, yeah. and for us, we did it artistically. You know, you know, like water fountains and you know rough texture walls and caves and stuff. And they did that. They did my work for years and years and years, and they were competitors. In um, in the L.A. hat contests uh, right around Halloween, and they were they were they were you know they literally worked on these fucking hats all year long, you know like 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 uh you, 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 you know yeah but they're fucking on acid right okay and and, and so. <laughs> the thing is, is they, they, uh, I noticed that when they would come over, they, they, they had this trailer that they pulled behind them. And these guys had no brain cells left at all. I mean, this foam, they would spray this foam without fucking mass or anything like that. And they were just, they, they, they were walking poisoned. They were just, you know, they were like dead men walking. Or okay, dead woman walking, you know, however that goes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they were the funniest guys. They were really very funny and very, very dry for being, well, maybe, maybe they were just very dried out is kind of where I'm, where I'm going with. But what I'm saying is, is they would always be putting stuff together, like these little packets of something. And um, I said, oh, th that's... That's great, you know. What are you guys doing? And 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 they said, "Oh, it's it, it's our uh, uh, serial killer card of the month club." Okay. And so, I actually got a year's subscription prescription, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> doctor, kill doctor me. Ordered. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered. And uh, and so I got serial killer of the month in in my mail for for a year. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that was pretty fucking weird. <laughs> no doubt. Real of the month. I do have Richard Ramirez. 
<laughs> I did. You know what? I I got Richard Ramirez and Ed Gaines in my ear. Oh, perfect. I did. <laughs> yeah, the other the other guys, I don't think I remembered. You know, because they had a lot of serial killers. You know, um, yeah, that chick that was a serial killer. I, I almost uh, uh, did that movie. Uh, but oh, um, oh, what's her name? Ted? Ted? No. Yeah, it was a Canadian, right? Canadian. Canadian. Oh, they're fucking all Canadians. You know what? They, they, they all believe they're Canadians anyway. <laughs> that name's going to come to me. I don't remember. I was Canadian. <laughs> have, have you seen, have you seen, uh, I, I have to go into something here. Uh, it, we're talking about book signings the other day, and I was going to show you that, uh, that I actually have signed a couple just for Canadians. And uh, I was going to uh, run them past you and see what you thought. Um, <laughs> Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Um, I think that they're particularly. Uh, let's see. No, it wasn't that one. No, it's not those. Not those. <laughs> what the fuck happened with that? Okay, hold on. Well, I know that this is riveting radio, right? It's you know what? I don't give a fuck. It's your show. It's not mine. <laughs> Uh, that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, Mick shits on Canada every chance he gets. No matter every how chance I get, no, god damn it. No matter how you know many times it is, I shit with love. No matter how many times I apologize for Nickelback, you fucking Americans keep <laughs> shit on ah! Oh god, I said it. No. no. Oh, did you follow that Nickelback? <laughs> I still apologize, even though I had nothing to do with it. I I heard somewhere that Nickelback actually got their name because they're really from Sudbury, not Vancouver. And the reason why they're called Nipple, Nickelback, Nickelback, is because <laughs> well, a nickel mine. That sounds like a great creature. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> me. Uh, There's your next to me, Mick. You don't have to. My wife and I have a corner of the house that that has a plant in it. It's very green, quiet, and cold. We don't think of it very often, but when we do, we call it Canada. Mother <laughs> it took, a, took a second there, didn't it? <laughs> I think I read that one on Facebook and I was like, this motherfucker, man. <laughs> First time I had him on the show, he's like, fucking Canadians. I'm like, here we go, right out the gate. He's just getting it out there in the open. So there's no fucking, you know. You know what? You know, you know what? It, it, it's sort it's sort of like getting the level right on your mic, right? You know, <laughs> it's like eh, fucking Canadians. Oh, dialed it in. Okay. You just you know, pissed off about the bacon, aren't you? I, I am. I am. Amen. You guys, you guys, and your bacon. Well, I can't it. imagine living in a country without coffee crisps, so. though. Without without what? Coffee crisps. Hey. Exactly. Me. I, I, I'm doing fine, and I have strips of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you know what? Our fucking bacon sizzles. Have you, it you also, ever heard that before? It also sizzles. I mean, when I mean, I mean without alcohol seltzer or anything like that, it sizzles. <laughs> it also sizzles when you piss, but that's not a good thing, bro. Get that looked at. Well... <laughs> It, it isn't? Yeah. I thought it was sort of yeah. artisanal. <laughs> just you smoke after sex? I, 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 I never checked. I never checked. <laughs> if you take a piss and it feels like Pop Rocks. Okay, I want a rocks. question. Well, how many can you get up there? <laughs> oh. The record is 40. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I uh, dare I ask what and your holding. Question. And holding. <laughs> <laughs> dare I ask what your question is? It's probably something fucked up, I'm sure. No. No, no, it, no. I don't give a fuck about, you know, your problems. I was I thought that you were gonna ask another question because see, she asked two questions and you somehow got around asking any question at all. Except why do you think for I brought her something on? about my balls. Why, no, why you think I brought her on? That was his question. <laughs> Why you know? Is she that asked the questions? Okay, ask a third question. You get questions uh, three. Ah! 
All right. What is what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie. Huh. My favorite movie right now? Right now, I'd tell you something. I really like a weird little film called, um, like overall, I don't know. I don't have one. I don't have like uh, the favorite movie overall. I, I don't think, I, I, I kind of like go in, go in ways. You know what? I'll tell you the, the film that I watched the most and it's just so fucking embarrassing. Like it's, it's just Galaxy Quest. I mean, uh, yeah, I know. And it's embarrassing, isn't it? That's terrible. I'm sorry what? to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to say something off Pornhub. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. It's dumb, isn't it? It's, it's, it's incredibly dumb. I mean, I, but, but I, I do have, a, I have an oddball favorite lately. As I, I really like Dave Made a Maze. You know, uh, it, none of you Canadians have heard it. Nope. Heard of it? Now, look, look, look at this. See, this is this. He's lost. Not a brain cell. <laughs> not a brain cell there. Not not one firing anyway. Uh, but uh, I'm not after reading your damn. The vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Heck you. <laughs> hey, that was just history, man. You know. Look, I'm a director now. <laughs> It even makes you laugh. How do you like that? You like that, eh? Can you, can you imagine what I'm going to be like on the set? Oh, my God. That's, it, 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 it scares the fuck out of me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh Actually, I've always been a little odd on set, I I must admit. On set only? <laughs> I, I, I literally had a, I literally had a first <laughs> AD when, when I was a production designer, and I came on the set, and like I, I threw a fake fit. In front of everybody, just 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 because I could, and then walked off. And the one thing, the one thing that I heard as I was walking off was the first AD explaining to the director. He goes, "Well, he's kind of like that." <laughs> but I was just like you. I was trying to avoid the question. <laughs> they didn't even. They didn't even think of myself. They didn't even think of themselves well. They didn't answer the question. <laughs> I just went, what the fuck? I mean, you're fucking asking me this fucking shit. Um, you, you haven't even used your own fucking brains. You want me to use my fucking time? My fucking time? I can't believe it. You guys are just a waste of fucking human energy. God damn it. And I walked off set. And, and <laughs> that's, I don't even think that they thought to themselves that... that they, I hadn't answered the question until, like, I was in my car and driving away. <laughs> <laughs> All they you know fucking... I think you both know that I would do that. <laughs> One time, what? I swear to God, this is true. One time, I made a model for this this thing called Hollywood Dog, which which had an animated dog um, that was kind of a dick. You know, I mean, he was, it was, oh God, it was a terrible show. Look it up sometime. You really, you'll go, oh my God, what's that awful smell? Oh, it's the TV screen. Anyway, <laughs> they, they, uh, in the script, it, they had like 13 executive producers and they're all sitting around this model of my, uh, that I had built. And uh, it's in the middle of like, you know, one of those big corporate, you know, Thing, this corporate desk, you know, and everybody's sitting around. And this was a, this is when people still smoked in LA, you know, like, you know, the smoke levels coming down. And they're they're like they're like looking at it, and and the look of the dog's apartment, which was in Hollywood, was called Hollywood Eclectic. Now, what I had learned was that Hollywood Eclectic was whatever producer. What every producer had in their house at that time was Hollywood eclectic, <laughs> little, little known to me at the time. And um, so they were in the middle of this production meeting and they are absolutely ripping it apart because it's not what they had in their own house, right? You know? And so, you know, the, 
like a 10 minute discussion about the fucking dog's fucking ashtray. And then, you know, the, the dog had a bark lounger. <laughs> a bark lounger, right? You know, oh my God. What color was the bark lounger going to be? And I fucking go, yeah, 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 yeah. It goes around and around and around. And it's like 45 minutes later. And I said, and I just reached down and I swear to God, this happened. I reached across and I just picked up the dog and the bark lounger and I threw it on the ground and I crushed it. And then they started going, oh my God, well, what's this, uh, this all about? And they said, uh, and, and I go, oh, well, wait, you don't, like the, you, you, you don't like the palm trees out front? And so I pulled them off and I just stomped them as hard as I possibly could. And I proceeded to disassemble the entire model. And then I turned around and walked out of the room. Now, you would have thought that it would have gone bad for me at that point. But it didn't because nobody wanted to tell me I was fired. Nobody wanted to tell me anything at all. They didn't want to say a fucking word to me. And that was great because every it was the quietest set I was ever on. You know, it's like if I had wanted to paint that thing with my ass resins, I swear to God, I could have done it and nobody would have said a fucking word. And you know what? That's That's a great Hollywood story right there. And you want me to look this fucking shit up to see what it was. <laughs> now, let me tell people that don't understand. There is a method to mix fucking madness because he views doing my show as time he'll never get back. So he's trying to pay me back by getting me to look this shit up and watching it. So <laughs> then we're both in the same boat. That's right. We I'm both even the, with you. <laughs> we both feel the same way. Um, this motherfucker <laughs> is on my show. With his Sally Jesse Raphael glasses, fucking, if only they were red, <laughs> trying to get me to watch this shit. Let me tell you a story about this fucking guy that is brilliant. He's a smart ass, but he's committed to the bit. The first time he comes on the fucking show, he probably don't even remember this brilliance, but... I don't, I, I don't remember anything. Exactly, see? He doesn't fucking remember five minutes ago. He's like, how do I agree to this bullshit? Um... <laughs> He comes out of my, I, I'm fucking texting him and he's asking, how fucking long are we looking at here? And I said, usually the show is about an hour, but if it runs long with some people, we just go and fuck, it doesn't matter. If you don't have that kind of time, that's fine too. He says, I'm about an hour and 46 minutes kind of guy. I said, well, that's pretty fucking oddly specific. We do the show and I get fucking everything edited and I'm looking at it, I'm like, motherfucker, it was an hour and 46 fucking minutes show. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker is committed to the I, bit. I, I can't even believe it. I had the patience for that, for you, for I, that long. I couldn't fucking believe it. I was like, damn, he's a man of his word, but he's regretting it now. I fucking tell you that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like I said, Anne silently over there reevaluating her life decisions. She's known uh, to high school and she's like, why the fuck didn't I just bail and stop well, talking well, to this well, idiot? Can, can can I ask you a weird question? Because I, I because I figured it's it, it's my turn. Is there any right? other kind? Um, other than my turn? No, <laughs> there's not. Uh, here, here's a question. I am assuming because I wouldn't go through the trouble to you know look you up. Because <laughs> I'm gonna let you tell me. What I, I know that you've done something before you're doing this. And I, I hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. You know, I I have never looked you up. I figured that you would want to tell your own tale. And then I can piss on it. <laughs> Jesus fucking this guy, I'm telling you, you find the fucking guy and he still doesn't know fucking rat shit from Rice Krispies about who the fuck you <laughs> You Canadians. <laughs> I, I've exchanged getting punched in the face for a living in MMA to do this shit, and I'm really regretting my choice because let me tell you, getting fucking kicked in the head is a lot less painful than talking to dicks like this. But, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a goddamn documentary about my fucking life. I've done all sorts of shit in you know outside of this. I'm fucking number ten out of the top fifty so far in the fucking world with this show. Somehow I keep fucking resorting to bringing this yeah. fucking guy how, back so i'm how, how do you do that exactly <laughs> <laughs> is, I, it, is it that you just put out so many shows that your numbers go up that high i wish you know but uh fuck i still got a lot of shows that i haven't released um which is crazy yeah, in, including this one right and i mean <laughs> i'm wasting your time for nothing it's never 
<laughs> it's that's, payback. Hey, that's the, come on, in our business, that's the ultimate payback. <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're going to release that next year, I swear to God. <laughs> I just had uh, recently Jan Birch on, who's fucking awesome. And uh, we ended up just talking about his fucking friendship with uh, Wes Craven, and that was cool as shit. I still have to release that. I, I'm so behind in, uh, I got so many in the barrel still. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, do, 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 are there people that, that you actually have like normal conversations with? <laughs> Every uh, I'm working on that. Maybe 2022 <laughs> that might take place. Uh, <laughs> so, so, it's so. Important. So that this doesn't happen. Depends on the so, session. Right, you know, it, it, it's good to have goals, right? So I, I put that ahead of me. I dangle that. I'm assuming, I, I'm assuming that this doesn't always happen. It depends who I get. Some people are like totally like that. They're about it. And then other people, you kind of, they're a little more reserved. So you got to get them to talk, but they do. Um, I, I've noticed that having writers on is a disaster. <laughs> writers uh and 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 actors if you want them to talk about anything other than themselves uh it, it can be a problem That's right. um uh let's see what else uh directors are usually pretty cool uh but dps directors of photography you know what if you really want to live a little bit longer you know if you want to stretch an hour into about a week and a half get a couple of dps on the directors of photography and oh my god it is like going it it, it is literally like having a, a high dive into hell i can, cannot tell you how how long i mean i mean i'm i'm actually going to live a year longer because i had two dps on my show at the same time oh, uh, oh ah. i'm sure they'll be thrilled to hear this <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm I'm explaining it on a podcast, so it's never going to get to them. Right, you know, <laughs> uh, especially not my fucking show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm number Ken. Oh. <laughs> you can't even get my goddamn name right. This is amazing. <laughs> Fuck, it's written for him and everything. Jesus Christ. Um, one of the easiest shows I ever had, actually, was Howard Bloom who was the PR guy for everybody from Michael Jackson to Prince to fucking, you know, you name it. And this motherfucker had stories for decades because he went two hours. I, you may have heard my voice fucking five times on the show. He just had stories for days. I tell you right now, if, if it wasn't a video show, I could have got up and took a piss and he wouldn't even know. <laughs> Come back. It was so easy. It was such an easy day at the office, man. And uh, fascinating dude, but it's like, we haven't even scraped the fucking tip of the iceberg, you know, <laughs> like with this guy. I haven't scratched the surface. Like this guy's fucking done so much in his career. And, uh, you know, fucking he's worked with so many people that he could probably do fucking, you know, 10 hours on each person, like Prince. You know, what you, you, you know what you ought to do is you ought to just have a freeze frame of your face that you put on. Um, and, and it's like, 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 like it throws like this, right? right. When you can go take a piss. Right. To, have a little know. recording of, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? Just, That's just... fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of my favorite ones are when I do guest spots on like radio shows because, like, there's no video. So, you know, you can sit there with your balls out. No one's going to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and you could sit there, you you could be sitting there with your balls out right now, and 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 nobody could tell. But who but, said I'm not? But that that look on your face with the air circulation would be different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm being a dick right now because today is my cousin's birthday. Who she posted one day. I'm sitting here listening to this motherfucker show, minding my business, and all of a sudden, bam, I got to hear about his balls. So I'm trying to get it in today as much as I can on this show. So she gets <laughs> mad as hell. <laughs> well, you sure you sure picked the right guy for that, you know? <laughs> you know? Exactly. I knew I knew what I was doing. I was yeah, like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, no worries. We can reschedule tomorrow. That's perfect. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, so somebody asked me... Uh, um, well, how do you know when you've gone over the line? 
Depends what you're talking. The answer, the answer to that is what line? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> There's none on this show. That's for no, damn. No, hasn't, hasn't been yet. The only time I've had to censor anything so far is when somebody says something. And then they're like, oh shit, there's like an NDA. So could if you cut that out because I might get in legal shit. So I'm like, yeah, no problem, it's done. Um, so that happens on occasion, but you know, and that's because I'm not gonna let my guests fucking end up in a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah hang out there, yeah. You know, yeah. lose their opportunity uh, to do some cool shit. So that'll do for sure. Um, out of courtesy, of course. But uh, other than that, people can say whatever the fuck they want. I, I really could care less. <laughs> God damn it. You know what? I sort of got, I, I, the next show I come on with you, I swear, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do 40 minutes of NDA shit and then go, oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Keith. You know what? I, my bad. <laughs> and that one I'm going to pull. It's all on an NDA. I, 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 I really wish... Oh, we're just going to have to. Uh, that one sorry. I'm going to post twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice a week. Oh, that's, that one's going fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. That one's going to be fucking advertised like a motherfucker. I'm going to start paying advertising agencies and make sure they don't fucking forget his name. I'm going to yeah. fucking send it to every place and be like, this motherfucker had the audacity to fucking come back here for more punishment then here's what he's gonna get for it he listened to him he wants to come back again in the future because he fucking he just that's, can't get that, enough that, of this that's, abuse that's right that's <laughs> right because you know what it's uh it, it takes a certain amount of time to get even with the last one right i don't know who I, abuses who i figure i figure i am now even <laughs> for the last one and then some time is going to go, have to go by, and then I'm going to have to get even for this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm just waiting to see up in this top corner, you know, just and get up and casually open the window and jump the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> just end it all. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck these idiots. I got, a, I got a Halloween joke for you guys. My favorite redneck Halloween joke. You want to hear my joke? Okay, let's go for it. Okay, what do rednecks do for Halloween? Okay. Pumpkin. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. My favorite Halloween joke. I think it's funny. Wait, you talking about incest? You exploded his head. Oh, he exploded his head. I saw the fucking <laughs> hamster filter and it took him a minute. You see the smoke coming out of his ears. That, that, was, that, was, that was so sweet and Canadian. You know? <laughs> Everything. You know, you, know, you know what? You, you, you do know that I'm now from uh, the Nashville area, and, and we've got those in the primary books. <laughs> <laughs> That joke's in the pri that 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 joke is is, is uh, nursery school fodder down here. <laughs> oh, everybody knows that one. Okay, my bad. That's hey, that's not a joke. That's on the FAQ. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, got a, I got a Mennonite joke. Okay, hit it. What do what do all Mennonite girls dream of every night? Two Mennonite. Two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good God. Okay, I, I'm, okay. You know what? As long as we're telling dumb jokes. My corny jokes, I love I, them. Because nobody here is a blonde? No, you can fire away. He's yeah, colorblind, though. That doesn't count. That, so. doesn't count. that doesn't count at all. No, so uh, uh, blonde goes into a store, and uh, into an appliance store, and says, um, I want that TV. And the salesman goes, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we have a policy here. And we don't sell to blonde people. And uh, she gets all, all offended. And she stomps out. And she uh, comes back in a week and she's dyed her hair, right? And uh, she comes in and she goes up to the same salesman. And she goes, I want that TV. And the salesman goes, 
I thought I told you we, we don't serve blondes in here. And she goes, how can you tell? I, I, my hair is dark. I, 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 how can you tell I'm a blonde? And he goes, well, because that's a microwave. <laughs> Fuck's sakes. <laughs> and you know what? That joke works with Canadians, too. It's just the same thing. Mother fuckers. Same thing. It's fucking the same thing. My God, I could have made that a Canadian joke. <laughs> and in fact, next time I will. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Has this gone on long enough? Well, if you are fucking done abusing me, then uh, by all means. Uh, listen, Keith, you, you know, I, I, I love abusing you, but I have to take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, unless you really want to, like, discuss my, my wiping technique, I think that I'm going to have to take uh, a, a good long break here. <laughs> a bio break. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could join me. It'd be an eye opener, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm eye closer. <laughs> the, funniest, the funniest thing is he thinks I'm going to edit this out. No. <laughs> oh, the really funny thing is, is I know you won't. <laughs> Man, uh, once again, it is uh, it, it has been a, a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I come on with you. Um, Couldn't tell you. Uh, fucking Canadians. I, I assumed you would have sooner flossed your piss hole with barbed wire than fucking do this again, but here we are, so. Thanks for having me. It was why, great. Why, why don't you bring up something I don't enjoy? Uh, the list is getting smaller and smaller by the fucking day, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ma'am. Well, I, I, I've had enough of you, and uh, Anne, thanks for coming by. I've had enough of you, too. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mick. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot, brother. It's always fucking fun with you. <laughs> crazy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> you too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, instead of trying to be that timing. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. If it's, been, if it's been an hour and 46 minutes, I'm stabbing this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Well, as All always, right. it's always Mick. Every time. This motherfucker. This is why I'm friends with him, because he's a fucking dick. This is what we do. So, I mean, what are you guys Definitely gonna... entertaining to, to, uh, to hear you guys kind of go crap all over one another. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> the only way we know how to communicate. It's totally in fun, though. Well, yeah, of course. We, I we, can't wait to see you in, like, hopefully you get to be in a movie that he directs. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be cool now that he's directing. I mean, if he can put up with me again uh, for that amount of time, you know, because that's like four hours a day on set for me. So if he could put up with me for four hours at a time, then hats yeah. off. Uh, he needs fucking... Well, so if he, he wasn't directing a Nightmare on Elm Street, he was the production of Nightmare on Elm Street? Production designer, so... Um, he did all like the effects stuff and shit like that, mm -hmm. like helped work on that. The book's pretty That's good. so cool. Yeah. That's like the fun stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. That sounds like a fucking blast. I would have uh make loved blood kinds of the cool make the cool stuff happen. Yeah, I mean he got to work on uh the um the chick that gets turned into a cockroach and the glue trap. He got to work on that gluey shit. It's all edible. Um <laughs> It was like gelatin type shit, basically, and sticky as fuck. And they got covered in it, and uh, it's pretty good times. So, uh, sounds like being at a Guar concert. Yeah, you know, it's great. <laughs> it's great when it's not you. I always get, you know, extreme joy out of reading about mixed misfortune. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll get some time here. I'll get to read his biography. I still have to see your biography too. I've been super busy but it's been great now having a vacation where i could do some of those things would be great too yeah you know when i get a day off it's nice and it's very fucking rare few and far between but i do this to myself so i can't complain 
Um, yeah. You know, the worst part about it is talking to dicks like Nick, but <laughs> 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 the, that, that's where the punishment <laughs> comes from. Jesus, this fucking guy. Yeah. yeah, so so everywhere I go now, everybody wants to know what I'm doing for my health because uh, you you gave me this meal plan and now I can't even talk about my own business anymore. It's like, what did you do? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucked your business. <laughs> I'm like, do you want your garden done? They're like, did you get thin because you do this for a living? And I'm like, well, no, I did some other things too. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. might want to elaborate when you say that or people are going to get the wrong idea like, yeah, and oh, what's the other... what's the like did you go on a diet i'm like well i actually eat more than i did before and she was jaw dropped like this is funny <laughs> hell yeah man more protein people need to understand that your body burns calories trying to digest protein mm -hmm. well the biggest thing for me that made sense to me was that i thought that you know, there's a giant misconception where people think that if you eat less, then you'll lose weight. But that's not true because your body will be unhealthy if you don't eat the vitamins and proteins and minerals that you need. Exactly. And the, um, there was a conversation about salt that came up around that. And so I started doing the salt water. But what I realized is that like when you put salt on your food, that's one thing. But when you dissolve it, it actually, your, your body can actually like use the minerals that's in it, which is supposed to be the, the beneficial thing of having that salt anyways. And a lot of things kind of were put in place for me and it's, uh, it's been a really good ride actually for the last few months, yeah. It's funny as fuck, I just thought. Um, God lover, my friend, also Canadian, Maxim Magazine model, Sherry Nelson, it seems every time I'm on their show, for some reason she keeps like, trying to sell me to like the female listeners which i think is hilarious i don't know why uh she always has such kind things to say and always directs it at the women when it's regarding me which is funny and here i am wearing this fucking shirt so she's probably and you know thinking what the fuck have i done <laughs> sorry sherry <laughs> good god sitting here That's talking okay. <laughs> it's landscaping. It's not landscaping. It's manscaping. <laughs> Gotta mow the lawn once in a while. <laughs> but, but it's a legit question when Mick's on. Like seriously, why bother? <laughs> that country song about legs is bad enough. It might as well be bald. <laughs> <laughs> not a country fan still. Hey, you know what I heard on the news this morning that your province had like a riot over lobster. Yeah, it, it's about like the um, natives' uh, rights and shit, and they're trying to fuck them over, which isn't cool. Um, it, it's the big, you know, corporate fucks that uh, are trying to like fuck over their um, rights to fish. You have contraband lobster. Like you're the you're you're you guys love seafood so much. I can't believe <laughs> this. This is as Canadian as it gets. They're dying over seafood out there, man. They're like torching businesses and then they're like sorry eh you know uh, last week i just well <laughs> last week when i was at work i there's a lot of reserve areas so some of the parts of the community will be reserved and native people will live there so i have clients with these areas and uh guys out there cleaning fish and i was like hey you're trading those <laughs> but it's great like it's not a problem here they do it all the time, but it's just kind of seen as like that's what they do. It's their right because they've been given extra rights to the land, right? But nobody, nobody's torching buildings over that. It's hilarious, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we do different things out here, man. We do shit a little differently. We're a little more <laughs> aggressive. She's like, I paid $60. I just needed a lobster. <laughs> Fuck's sakes, we get fucking pretty passionate about our seafood out here apparently i don't know man i'm just like it's all right but you know i can take it or leave it but fuck me i'm not gonna torch a building over this shit but yeah, I, I like most seafood but not lobster I, I, I do get it though that's their living and shit and you know and the natives obviously have their fucking rights and these fucks are trying to you know uh do some shady shit man they've been doing a lot of like really fucking shady shit um fucking with like their lines and shit like that when they're fishing and just doing all sorts of fucking shit they shouldn't be 
and it's getting out of hand. So yeah. I heard they were saying that uh, the uh, commercial guys are going out and cutting the nets from the uh, the native people because they're not supposed to be using those nets or the lines that they're using. Anyways, it's a huge squabble, but there's always there's always seems to be something going on in like the uh, the waters. There's always other like even in our Canadian waters, there's other nations that kind of sneak in and fish our waters. So it's not like one localized problem. It just seems like those people are fighting worse about it right now than anyone else is. That's how we get down out here, bro. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting to hear. Like, I'm just waiting to like read that somebody slapped someone else with a salmon or some shit. Oh, they already did that. Monty Python's Flying Circus. You don't remember that? I want reality, yeah. man. I want to see was, shit for yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear someone got bitch slapped with a tuna. Like, why not? <laughs> and in the freezer, maybe I can make that happen for you. <laughs> His jaw is broken and it's COVID related. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's a couple of politicians I could think of I'd love to slap in the face with a salmon. <laughs> My God, the salmon is not safe today, man. <laughs> Everyone's picking on the salmon. No, well, out here there's a lot of like we have, people fish salmon out here, and we have a lot of it. But uh, the, the the numbers of salmon in the rivers has actually gone down, and there's a couple of groups that are actually in place. One of them is called Stream Keepers, and they rehabilitate the the riparian habitats and encouraging more salmon to be able to propagate there. So that's really cool. But uh, it's actually, you can see certain areas that get fished a lot and that have human development, They've there's no fish in them anymore. You have to go to like more remote areas. It's a big problem here actually, the logging and everything, right? I'm gonna do you a favor because I've known you so long. You said that you are going to convince people to listen to this fucking show. So I'm gonna do you a favor right now because after Mick being on and all that, if you want to take this opportunity to also apologize to those people for getting them to listen to this shit, I'll let you go ahead. I'll give you yeah. that. Thanks. Yeah. So anybody who uh, is interested in what I do for a living, um, my, I make my living landscaping. My company is West Flora Landscaping. There's a card for you. And uh, my name is Emma Gillis. We are a residential landscaping company based out of North Vancouver. I do installation and maintenance. If you're interested, my email address is ann at westflora.ca. So it's A-N-N -N at W-E-S-T-F-L-O-R-A dot C-A. I'm also part of a networking group. So if anybody wants to come and join me on Wednesday, October 21st at 7 a.m., I will be doing a presentation about my company, which will last about eight to 10 minutes. Visiting is free. So if you're interested, give me an email and I will make sure that you get registered for the meeting. But you didn't apologize to people for making them listen to this bullshit. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Once they hear my shit with Mick, they're going to be like, really, Ann? Really? This is what you told me to listen to? My God. So I gave you the chance to apologize to those people. I did give the, the, the uncensored disclaimer. Like, if you have kids, you know, maybe it's not for them. But <laughs> you, you don't even know. You just lost some friends. You know that, right? <laughs> they just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know it yet but i assure you now you see this is what mick does okay this motherfucker talks and talks and talks and that poor dude nick didn't get to say a damn word barely and he was the effects guy for tremors and the blob among other things which oh, is wow. so that's the kind of people i i, I get and uh, it's cool to talk to them because i love all that shit i remember being seven years old when i first saw tremors man so that was cool i know I, that was like my first scary like ish movie that i watched i think which it doesn't seem scary at all anymore but i remember the time when i watched it, it was like oh my god <laughs> really it was your first one well actually that's not true my mom told me that when i was like an infant we went to the drive-in and, and Ghostbusters was my first movie and the rest of the family fell asleep and I was the only one that stayed awake. So my mom had, had to stay awake to watch it with me. And yeah, Ghostbusters was it. I was the one who kept the candle burning all night. <laughs> my two first horror movies, I don't know which one came first uh, in terms of what I saw first. 
but my first two was probably about four years old um, when I saw Poltergeist and Ghoulies. <laughs> I don't know which one I saw first, but both of them were like fucking insane at four years old. So I remember when I was young, we, I watched the Amityville Horror film series. Like there's a bunch of them, right? Yeah. And I have there's a story for you. I have three older brothers. I'm the youngest. So so like my childhood life was about like avoiding being teased by my brothers who always re reinvent new ways. So we watched this movie. I was so scared because in the beginning of hum Annieville Horror 4, there's this part where the guy gets his hand eaten by the garbage compactor in the sink. Right? So as soon as the movie was over, I'm like, I'm going to the washroom, but I'm terrified something's going to happen. Can you just wait outside of the washroom and like make it so that I don't have to be scared? And so my brother's like, yeah, okay, no problem. So he reaches in and flushes the toilet and scares the crap out of me. They tease me for like, they must, they still tease me about these things to this day. It's hilarious. I, like, I don't want the people to eat my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I was dumb. I don't know your kids, right? I think I was like six and uh, maybe a bit older, but I was at my grandparents' place and I was in the living room with my grandfather he had all the lights off and on tv i was probably older than six i think it came out a bit later um but i was pretty young um arachnophobia was on tv and mm. he he was watching that shit and i already hated fucking spiders man that's not my thing if i see them i smash them so uh <laughs> i go into the bathroom brushing my teeth at the sink and I'm already paranoid of the sink because I saw the part with all the fucking spiders coming up through the drain and shit. And I'm in my bare feet. And as I'm standing there brushing my teeth, legit, a spider ran across my bare foot out into the hallway. And I probably <laughs> outran it and boogied and jumped on the couch, put my feet off the floor like, fuck that. Because um, <laughs> I was just a little fucker and uh, traumatized immediately. I was like, fuck that movie. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't go, don't go to Central America then. The spiders there are huge, man. I had a war with a spider. I was like spear chucking a broom from across the room at it, man. It was, it was like, it was big. I, I got, I, I, uh, I had one on my back, like the size of a, like that big. The spiders are the size of your hand. They'll eat you, man. I don't know. Yeah, that was the worst part about Costa Rica. But most of it was awesome. <laughs> Have you lost your motherfucking mind? Why would you go anywhere where spiders can bench press you? Oh my God. Have you seen those ones that are like in the desert? The, yeah. the soldiers like uh, bed on them. They, 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 they fight them like they're roosters. Yes. That's what? awesome. Yeah. They're huge. They're like the size of a dog or something. It's like I was going to go to Australia again until fucking I saw the size of those sun bitches. And I'm like, I'm good on that. <laughs> they have a lot of deadly snakes there too in australia and costa rica but australia i think is a country with the most different kinds of deadly snakes yeah i don't mind snakes i'm good with that i will punch every snake in the face but spiders man now nah, i'm good on that shit uh, it's way easier to die from a snake bite than a spider bite though i know i don't care about being bitten i just don't want to look at those ugly motherfuckers man they're gross nasty oh, i don't know snakes for me i don't know <laughs> kind of cockroaches is bad one night when i was in costa rica i we like i fell asleep watching a movie and i had a glass of wine right and while i fell asleep a huge cockroach uh, climbed into my glass of wine i woke up after the movie was over i turned the computer off and i went to go and drink the rest of my, my wine i almost swallowed this guy i had food poisoning for a week man it was horrible nasty I, yeah there was like there, there was one year i went down there for three months and i think i almost died like three times and all in that that was one time that second time was uh i went surfing which was awesome and i was actually did pretty well but i got a sunburn that was so bad that i ended up like fainting and stuff and anyways i lived you know this is exactly why i brought you on the show right because motherfuckers are always like, so you traveled just to get punched in the face for a living. Well, now you motherfuckers have heard somebody who travels and almost dies every time and still does it anyway. So now, I'm, now I don't look so insane. You got a story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, what? actually, there was one time I got stung by something, but uh, and like my whole face puffed up and it was not good. I got I was poisoned by something, but I still don't know what it was that bit me. It could have been a spider. So how fucking long have we known each other now? You've got to be reevaluating some serious decisions in life and like, how yeah. the fuck do I put up with this idiot? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there's a lot of other people in the world, too. Some of them are easier to deal with than others. You just happen to be one of the easier ones. <laughs> I'll take it. A win's a win, like I said. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. Yeah, I know. We've, we've known each other for 20 years now, Keith. In its own fucked up way, that, that was some kind of compliment in my mind, anyway. <laughs> 20 years. I haven't known too many people that long. Yeah. It's, uh, it's out of my family. It's probably been longer than that now, no? Like 90. Well, um, what's that? Probably about 99. Yeah, well, let, I think, well, how old was I? I think I was 16 when I met you, and I'm 36 now. Damn. That sounds about right. I think it's you, actually you fucked up. <laughs> 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 People do some dumb shit at 16, eh? Like, meet my ass. <laughs> I was Crystal's fault. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was kind of thrust upon you. I think someone else kind of influenced it, kind of brought yeah. it to you. So it wasn't really your fault. It, it was just not your choice. <laughs> uh, happens, happens. Life throws you a curve while you do it the best you can with it. All you can do in this life is make yourself strong. <laughs> Motherfuckers just come on my show to roast my ass. I'm telling you. The abuse I take. <laughs> Good God. Somebody's going to start a GoFundMe just be, to be like, this motherfucker earned it. Like, let's just send him some shit because people abuse him too much. He'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, either one. <laughs> there's probably that one too, you know, on the other side. Of, you know, there's other people that. <laughs> well, that's what I said actually on. Um... Uh, a show that Sherry Nelson co-hosts and she was like you know why do you think people are so um like why why do you think when you have guests you get them to talk so much when other people can't and I said probably because they want me to shut the hell up so <laughs> no I just think like uh different people have different types of personalities some people are going to open up more than others and it's about settling on a topic, you know, like with Mick, you know, he, he's like, ask me a question. We got to figure out, you got to kind of tap him for like the good stories that are in him, you know? Nobody wants to hear anything from Mick. <laughs> <laughs> what he doesn't know. Stories. He's got a couple good stories. His wife actually sends me checks every so often to have him on the show to get him out of her fucking hair for a while. You know, oh, really? <laughs> so I get paid for it. Perfect. That's not true, but I wish yeah. it was. I, I'm putting it out there as an offer because next time it's going to cost her. I, I've shown her I can take him for a couple hours for free, but now next time the price goes up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Businessman to the end. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck being an actor. It's going to suck being inside of a costume if you're going to be a serial killer in a mask. Can you imagine? It's going to be like four hours of sweating your ass off. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But I mean, I do that in the gym anyway. So it's kind of a natural transition. And I figure I want, if you're all sweat, death defying stunts, <laughs> right? That's what I'm looking forward to. I want I know there's a like insurance thing where they don't let you do a lot of that yourself because you're not like a qualified stunt person. So you usually have to fight for that. But I'll do what I can and see what I can get away with. <laughs> I'm a qualified stunt person. Right? I mean, there, I, I'm sure that's a process, but I'll, I'll fucking happily do it. You could. I've always done dumb shit. Do the next white Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. <laughs> way, way to raise that bar so high for me. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, I figure, you know, I've had a few ideas pitched to me, so I don't know what it's going to be. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Jimmy Starr, fucking, who is a producer, among many other things. He's an actor, producer, fucking show host. 
who he's been doing podcasts and radio shows since the beginning of podcasts. So, I mean, the guy's, you know, fucking been around for time. He's a fashion designer. He does everything. So he said to me, 6'5", 265 of muscle. Motherfucker, why are you not the next Jason Voorhees or, My- or you know, Myers or whatever? And I was like, because nobody asked, bro. I would be on that in a fucking second. And he's like, would you be interested? Well, this is when I was on their show. And he's like, would you be interested in being a horror movie killer? And I'm like, fuck yes, dude. So he's like, we're going to have to make this happen then. So I'm like, oh, oh shit. This is for real. (laughs) So I'm like, yes. Then I had about like three or four other people come to me with the same thing. So it's like, oh, now there's a lot of interest out there. Um, so I've had a few ideas, like I was telling you off the air last night that somebody pitched to me, one of my favorite video games ever, like you should be the character from Splatterhouse and anyone that's not familiar with that game, it's dope as fuck. There's like these demonic creatures that have this dude's family. He ends up, he he wears like a cut off, like sleeveless fucking shirt. He's got pipes like a motherfucker and this mask that's demonic it's almost like the concept of like the venom movie where only he could hear the voice talking to him and it's the mask telling him you know to do this shit to kill every fucking creature he sees it's demonic it has its fucking vendetta and it's also got its agenda it wants something from him on a long-term basis uh you know in exchange for helping him get to his family so the cool thing about the the game for 360 is the mask's voice it's this deep fucking creepy ass but like you can tell it's like a sadistic voice and the actor the voice actor is the same dude that did winnie the pooh's voice believe it or not oh wow that's weird so uh someone said to me the 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 shit that made me laugh about the game that i loved uh it was what was pitched to me someone said you would be perfect to have your voice do this shit because the mask is so sadistic when like in this game there's no specific weapon you find something you pick it up you use it so you find this two by four on the ground you pick it up and the mask is like a two by four let's do some fucking carpentry (laughs) and i was like yes i love this dude's just fucking eagerness to smash faces with a piece of wood you know so they were like you know the creative people the effects people are like imagine what we could do with you just smashing fucking faces and shit with every object you could pick up and find they, they would have so much fun with it. So I was like, dude, this could be awesome. So it's like, if they could get the rights to do that and the licensing, I'd fucking be all over that. It's almost a Jason-esque looking mask in a way, but it's got like its own eye shape and it's got like the slots where the mouth is and just the nose hole. Yeah. Very creepy, strapped to the dude's head. Um, in some of the games, like in the original ones, dude was like Montel Williams bald. But I thought, you know, I would fucking like have dreads kind of thrown back to add to that fucking you know and make it our own yeah bald kind of i don't know it's like hellraiser it's a- yeah hellraiser. it's not for me um i thought having fucking dreads thrown back almost you know predator like but have that fucking creepy ass mask and just ripping heads off and shit would be dope as fuck so i uncovered this, this kind of like uh be rated homemade horror kind of video game on the internet it's called uh, the the birth of isaac have you ever heard of this no a really weird youtube video that's like homemade that goes with it and what it is is it's like the story have you ever heard the story of uh isaac from the bible where he goes abraham's his father and his and god tells abraham to sacrifice his child yep. and then at the last minute the okay so it's that but it's kind of like told from the perspective of isaac Ooh. Where his mom decides to like kill him, but then he opens a trap door and goes into the floor. And then this video game starts, which I haven't actually played it, but I've watched a lot of like gameplay of it because it's really weird. And yeah, so he has no belongings, he has no clothes, and he's like, he's uh, in, in the basement making his way through a dungeon, and his only weapon to fight with is his tears. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> I have to find it, look it up. It's really crazy. I haven't downloaded it because, like, I'm on a break from playing any of video games right now because I'm trying to be really productive. So, like, because I'm landscaping, like, winter is, like, my video game time. I'm allowed to play video games, like, January, but not the rest of the year. So, so that might be the one that I play in, in this coming winter for me. But, a lot yeah. of people, you know, Isaac and his brother. <laughs> a lot of people know the types of games, like, that I get into. And 
my story about um, Resident Evil 7. Good God. Uh, no. Nah. Um, I got to get back into that. But one night, I made the mistake of trying to play that shit when I'm high as fuck. <laughs> and it's way too real. Because like it's like first person. And within the first minute, you go into this dark, creepy ass house. You go and investigate the dark basement. There's no lights and whatever. You got a flashlight. So you're just waiting for some shit, right? You're yeah. looking for your girl that uh, you're engaged to. She's in there somewhere. And all of a sudden, she's just nuts. So you come back up and all of a sudden, as you're trying to close the door, she lunges at you, which is one of those like jump scare type things that, you know, mm -hmm. scares the seven shades of shit out of you if you're not ready for it. And then fucking puts a screwdriver right through your hand. And I was like, oh, I was so high. I was like, this is why you don't date bitches off Tinder, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, and, and then she like lops your hand off. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then there's like this hillbilly creepy bastard that, you know, fucking wants you dead, but wants you to eat some disgusting dinner at their place first, like while your hands gushing blood and missing and, you know, fucking, uh, it's so gross trying to make you eat all sorts of fucked up shit and uh you get up and leave you run but you got to find your way out this crazy bastard is enjoying chasing you trying to find you to kill you with like a cleaver or some bullshit and i'm so high i'm like this is way too intense right now bro i don't know where i'm going i'm going in a circle and i'm like i'm too high to figure this shit out fuck this game <laughs> i haven't got back to it yet but uh, i do intend to and somebody told me if you play it in VR mode, it's way fucking worse. Yeah, I was going to say, virtual reality, the only, like, good things that have come out for anything virtual reality is horror games. Because it's like, explore this creepy house. I uh, I had this roommate who was, she was the kind of person who you could, like, walk up behind her. She was easy to scare. I was like, hey, try out this new game. It was so funny. <laughs> Fun and I started for it and she was like on the floor, like going falling <laughs> <laughs> down on the floor, going, ah, ah! you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be amazing when like the cause the virtual reality technology uh, is so far surpassed, like the games that it can handle. It would be nice when they actually come up with some games that will actually be like really good for virtual reality i could see in the next 10 years it's going to totally become a thing that's dope i had joseph kelly on the show which i got to release that too still we talk about video games but he's a producer and shit he's in um in, in an actor too he's done like bumblebee uh which is that transformers spinoff movie yeah um and a few other fucking big ones and i was like holy shit dude uh he was in um training day which is cool um with denzel washington back in the day um yeah fuck he's done so much shit and he was like yeah dude um you're definitely in mind for the next horror movie that we work on and uh in april if everything's calmed down and the borders open he's like uh, you're invited to the premiere of clown motel 2 which they're putting out uh which is a horror movie and he's like so fly out to you know cali and fucking come out for that so i was oh like my God. Hey, I don't know if I could handle you as a scary clown. <laughs> that would be fucking freaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I wanted to go that route because it feels like it's been done to death. Um, especially now with Bear Movie doing that, I think people would probably be like, really, guys? Um, but there's a lot of people in that fucking movie, too, which is dope, that I'll probably end up having on my show. He told me someone that wants to be on my show is... Uh, Eileen Dietz, who was the creepy face in Exorcist. Um, um, that that fucking possessed face that you see, that that flash of a, a face that creeped everybody the fuck out. Yeah. My show's producer said it traumatized her hardcore. And uh, yeah, so she was in that. And um, apparently she wants to come on the show, which is dope. Um, also, Tony Moran, who in 1978 in Halloween when Meyer's mask comes off, that was him. Uh, they used his face for that. Uh, so he played him unmasked. Um, I'm friends with Sandy Johnson, who is uh, Judith Myers in Halloween in 78 too, the first person to be killed. And uh, she also did Playboy and shit. So I always fuck with my listeners and like my fans and be like, yeah, 
you know, you may also know her from Halloween, you fucking pervert degenerates, but even then you see her jugs in that, you bastards. So that's probably the only reason you know who she is, you perverts. Every <laughs> Halloween movie's had a little bit of that in it. Of course, you have to. Dig fair, she's fucking the first, um, the first one was the best, because it was so 80s, I don't know, it'll always, that will always be the best one for me. Just the way, the way that, the way that it was shot, the way it feels like being back in the 80s again i know it's nostalgic right oh absolutely uh, i love anything 80s man because that was a dope time uh dig farish was awesome from rob zombies remake who played young myers the creepy kid he was also that annoying little bastard like obnoxious little fucker in hancock and he talked about that um he said they strapped him to a crane because he gets thrown up into fucking space and shit damn near so they I really had, can't talk Hancock so much. I just didn't go see it because everybody said that movie was so bad. Yeah, uh, it was hit or miss with people, but he had a blast doing it. And then like two days later or three days later, I talked to his mom, who is ultra, also like a horror movie actress, but she was also into burlesque and shit back in the day. She loved that. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so she was fucking awesome too. Um, so many cool people on my fucking show, man. And there's so many. And I forget like, how many fucking people I've had and it's like it's been a blur because like like I said some days I do like three guests a day um I've talked to so many damn people um literally like bass players Phil Collins fucking drummers that have played with Collins with Aerosmith with fucking literally everybody like my boy Kenny Aronoff good friend of mine um played with fucking everybody you can imagine you name the motherfuckers he's played for them drum wise um it's pretty crazy man. I've, I've always wanted to meet the band kitty because the the person who's the drummer for that band is mercedes lander and i was we were friends in like grade five we were in the same class and i remember her telling me that her like her entire life's dream was to become a drummer in a rock band right and then she uh her 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 parents moved because her dad switched jobs or something and the next thing i know i'm watching like mtv when i'm 18 and she's there and i was like is that really the same person and it was just like crazy and it totally is that she achieved her dreams that was amazing and i i would i would love to have the opportunity to catch up with her and just like congratulate her because i remember that was like what she hoped and dreamed for for her entire life it's always nice to see people that don't actually give up on their dreams because so many people do i think yeah yeah, and I don't understand that. I honestly don't because um, people think other shit is like the safe route. And it's like, really, is it? Because I don't think there's such thing as job security in any industry. So you could lose your job doing something that was soul sucking for fucking like 40 years. Or you could put that time into something you actually enjoy and just fucking work at it till you make it. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know motherfuckers are always like, man, it's easy for you to say because you're already doing it. You're already there. You made it. But it's like, I had to go through it too, man. Just like anybody else, I had to fucking risk everything. And, you know, I, I did 18 hour fucking days working two jobs, night shift, still hit the gym, sleep for two hours, and then get up and do it all over again. You know, that sacrifice, man. And that's how yeah. I got from that. You know, it wasn't easy, but nothing worth doing is. I worked a lot of night jobs and kitchen jobs and factory jobs. I got to a point where I just wanted to be in a place where I was doing something that I believed in that was good for myself, but also good for like other people. And you don't, you don't know half the time people in their jobs, what they're doing, what it actually produces down the line for other people. Right. So I just feel like I created my own job security because I'm self-employed and because nothing's going to stop the grass and the trees from growing. Like people are always going to need yard work. You know, and it, it's cyclical because it goes up and down with the economy and actually the housing market, it follows uh, quite a bit. But uh, it's always going to it's always going to be a job that people will need, even if like robots start doing our taxes or whatever, like you still need a person to do the gardening. It's not the same thing. So, yeah, I kind of I kind of feel like job security is something that you got to create for yourself because no, nobody else is going to truly provide that for you exactly and i mean after hearing mick on my show i'm i'm certain people are well aware that at this point i run the shit on my show nobody tells me what i can and can't say or who <laughs> i can't talk to so you know I, 
tries to definitely. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> whether that's a great thing or not, I don't know at this point, but. Um, <laughs> Ask me a question. <laughs> Fuck you, Mick. Just for that, I'm not going to. <laughs> You're not going to tell me what to do, Strawn. <laughs> I, I bet his buddy is probably like, why am I here? This motherfucker's not even letting me talk. <laughs> Mick does that. He'll, he'll get into it and. Yeah, he's very animated. He can tell he's got a lot of energy. But I guess for the for him being on a set and making movies and all that stuff that he does, gotta gotta be a person with a lot of energy like that. How would you do it? <laughs> he he told this story before, but you know, for anyone that's hearing this for the first time, this is hilarious. Um, that fucking robot that we were talking about that freaked everybody out. Um, that poor girl that was in the suit she's a gymnast now keep in mind for those that don't know this robot was a psa in canada for fucking safety war amps it was right war. Yeah. yeah so it's about safety and not losing your fucking limbs so they're over there in the u.s these backwards motherfuckers were doing this psa about safety while they had her rigged up to cables that were strapped to the back of some random guy's pickup truck out in the lot and she's dangling there. That dude decides it's time to go home. So she gets pulled because he's driving off. She gets pulled up through all these pipes and shit, ends up injured and on the shelf for like six months. And they can't get anyone else because she's the only one that fits that suit. So they got to wait for her to recover. Uh, thankfully, she was a gymnast, he said, or it would have been worse. She was all right, but she had to recover, you know, and whatever. I'm like, so you're doing a, a PSA about safety doing the dumbest, most unsafe shit. <laughs> Stupid motherfuckers. The last, well, now we know, the last motherfuckers to advise us about safety is the war ants because this is the shit <laughs> they hire. <laughs> yeah, after that, I think they just had like kids playing hockey and stuff after that one came out. <laughs> we'll just do something a little nicer yeah a little safer because... <laughs> any more liabilities for ourselves that's right playing hockey that way if they fall and get hurt we blame nature the ice did it not us <laughs> uh, that's right you live in canada toughen up kid that's right you know you can't fucking sue us over this um <laughs> so that story was kind of funny and uh it was the 80s, of course. So he said there was literally people coming in on set um, with like white still under their fucking nose because they're in oh, their yeah. Norton, some Coke and fucking. Th these are the people that you're trusting with your safety. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That just gives me a whole new spin on like what happened for my child you ruined my childhood keith <laughs> you're welcome this is what i do i ruin lives and then i send them on their way perfect reality check your whole childhood was a lie <laughs> <laughs> kills people <laughs> this is the best part you know it's like all my childhood i get to like i'm friends with these people now that i grew up watching their movies and then i fuck up other people's childhoods <laughs> Yeah, it's like a system. Right. I, I can't <laughs> let the show be one dimensional. The circle of life. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Simba. <laughs> I get to live my dream and fucking piss all over yours at the same time. It's it's yeah. lovely. It's it's like awesome. it, I mean, it, it's <laughs> it's so weird because every time I think about it, especially when I'm high, it trips me out. Um, I sat here for two hours one day and became super close friends with um, Kenny Olson, who was the guitarist for Kid Rock. And I was like, dude, I sat in this shithole Malton, Ontario basement fucking watching you guys play at Woodstock 99 on TV. And now I'm friends with your ass. And well, here we are talking about getting high and fucking doing like he wants to do videos where we just sit and like talk shit about movies as they play. 
<laughs> and I was like, that's dope. And then I, I remember Halloween when Rob Zombie remade it. Um, the night it came out, I went to see it. And I thought, man, this kid is creepy as shit. Now I'm friends with Dave Fair, who was that kid. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> it's life, man. It's unpredictable. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah, man. I kind of elected to have the hideout, duck and cover kind of way of life. But there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. <laughs> I, I, I feel like um sherry nelson and i kind of agreed on this we're both very introverted people and don't like being the center of attention so naturally we get into careers that fucking gives us just that whether we want it or not kind of thrust that upon us and it's like well what yeah. the fuck? you know it just seems to be the way it goes um yeah you know, it, it's weird like that i don't know why that happens but it seems to i think that's because you're you're the kind of guy that has to constantly challenge yourself right so you pick the thing that you hate the most and then you make yourself do that <laughs> you know it's true it's so true and it comes with the gym mentality. yeah yeah it comes with the gym mentality of like if i hate something i make myself do it until i like it like leg day for example used to bore me to tears so i was like now you're doing it extra hard you know yeah. you're gonna do like 740 pound squats and shit for a warm up, just because fuck you, that's why you hate leg day, you're gonna fucking have a reason to hate it, you know, and you do it so much that you start to like it. And um, that's always been my mentality of learn to like it, you know, um, because it's necessary, learn to find the positive in it and enjoy it. Um, so I guess that's probably exactly what it is, is, um, you know, I'm sure people think that, well, all you do is sit there and talk to fucking people. Poor you. You get to talk to other celebrities and shit. You poor thing. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. It's like some days you just don't want to do this shit. Like you don't want to fucking talk to anybody. But you got three shows lined up and all people that you respect. And like, you know, you got to be 100% on point and not let it show that you're just not into it right now. You have to fucking not disrespect them because that's not their problem. They're giving mm -hmm. you their time. You know, and every fucking guest I've had has asked if I would have them back. So I was like, dude, that's cool. Um, I had Jan Birch on from People Under the Stairs. I don't know if you remember that creepy Oh, actor. I remember that movie. Yeah. That movie was awesome. Right. He was the Stairmaster. And now he's a good friend of mine. And when he oh. was on the show, I'm going to release that today. Um, he even says on the show, dude, I could talk to you for like three hours but you have another guest. So we got to do this again because fucking this wasn't long enough, you know, and we talked for an hour and I was like, damn dude. And he's sitting in his car doing it just so he gets some quiet, you know what I mean? So he could do it and yeah. off the air. It was hilarious. He's like, don't ever get married unless you get tired of having sex. <laughs> like, I was like, this needs to become a segment. I was like, you're lucky this ain't on the air. So you don't get no trouble. <laughs> and uh so i was like maybe this needs to be a new segment you know fucking advice from the people under the stairs man <laughs> 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 yeah, just <laughs> don't get, the stairs <laughs> you know, don't don't get married unless you're done fucking <laughs> we'll make an hour conversation out of it <laughs> yeah if you want your man to cook dinner leave the stuff that he likes in the freezer <laughs> there's a good one for you <laughs> hey man i love cooking uh, anyone tries to get in my damn kitchen is getting a fucking backhand like get out of here that's my spot <laughs> yeah i'm kind of the same way but i don't have time right now because i'm working so it's been great i've actually i've doubled already what i've done last year so by the time the year is over i think i probably will triple the amount of business that I've had this year from last year. So I'm, I'm, it sounds like I'm complaining because I'm really busy, but I'm really not. I'm, I'm so happy to, to have it. Yeah. Right. And I tell people the same thing all the time. It's like, dude, when I say I'm super busy and I'm like gassed out and I'm like drained and shit, I am not in any way complaining or, you know, fucking ungrateful for the success and everything, man. It, it's great, but it does, you know, take its toll eventually. And, um, it's always a good thing but yeah you know totally for a vacation but that's not happening all this stupid COVID thing is going on you know i I, did, <laughs> I tried to do the vacation thing like a three-day thing and i'm still getting texts like can you do this person on this day i'm like sure 
you know, like I literally, again, not complaining. It's like I have fucking celebrity guests at, being tossed my way that want to do the fucking show. I don't ask people. They fucking come to me. So that's dope. Like I ain't mad at it. And then yeah. I got a text saying that New York and LA Weekly Times fucking acknowledged me as number 10 out of the top 50 shows in the world, which means I surpassed Howard Stern and a bunch of other fucking people. I was like, what the fuck? Wow. And I'm on vacation, balls deep in some beer, and I'm not fucking, I'm looking at this like, what in the fuck? How the fuck did that happen? Because I literally just that month or uh, uh, the month before hit the one year mark doing this. So first fucking year and I'm there. I'm like, what in the sweet fuck is going on? Here? So here's one of the things that I realized is that if you don't take that time to step back and take, have a little bit of a break, you would never even have noticed how amazing you were doing. And you probably would have been so busy that you wouldn't have stopped to acknowledge yourself for how great of a job you actually did. So so I think I told you about two or three weeks ago, I had this really crazy mushroom trip where I probably took way too many shrooms. Anyway, so I had this moment in this, in this night where somebody handed me a beer and then somebody handed me like a twisted tea. And I, I was just, I just kept talking and kept saying that I wanted a drink, but I didn't open. I'm like, wait a minute, this keeps happening in my life because I get acknowledgement, but I'm so busy, like doo -doo -doo, doing whatever I'm doing that I don't even notice that people are actually thanking me for the, the awesome job that I do because I'm too busy thinking about the next thing I got to do, right? I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. And then you get depleted. You're like, why doesn't anybody appreciate me? <laughs> but <Yeah>. they do. <laughs> To your point, I would not have known unless it was sent to me in a text from a PR agent who uh, sends me a bunch of guests that want to be on the show. And my initial thought, my unassuming ass was like, oh, my boy Jimmy Starr must be on this list. So I'm going to have to read the list, congratulate him on whatever spot he got, which is number one, which is great because he's been doing this since fucking they started, you know, since podcasts became a thing. And he does it on a radio show station and all that. And uh, who I'm friends with the owner of. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm not even thinking that like I'm on this fucking radar. I'm just like, okay, someone I know is on this. That's dope. And it sent to me two links, one for each um, New York and LA Weekly Times. And I see I'm number 10 out of the top 50. I'm like, what in the fuck? You know what I mean? It, Joe, yeah. Rog Joe Rogan's number two. Um, so a friend of mine uh, kind of said, dude, I don't really think you get it. Like, I don't think you take the time to realize you're on a fucking, uh, like, she, I've known her since third grade. And she's like, I don't think you fucking understand how fucking insane it is that you are on a top 10 list with Joe fucking Rogan, who's been doing this for how many fucking years now? Like 13 plus? And yeah. you're fucking eight spots away from him in your first year. You busted your ass to get where you're at. And you don't even realize where, what you've done. Um, and she's like, and I fucking hate that. And uh, she's like, you're always so forward focused on what's next. Right. So, and it's true. Like, even when I leave the gym, my first thought is tomorrow's workout. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. And that's like, that's like the human condition, right? Like, because we're so like, for me, I get, I, I get into this like dimensional stuff where it's like for, for people, we can only really experience our third dimension, which means time and space. Right. And the hard part is remembering that you have to enjoy the moment as it is, instead of always trying to think of like what you got to do or what you screwed up. Like people have a, like, I, I have to remind myself constantly to just be in the moment and enjoy where you're at. And so like for me, the time when I got to notice it the most is I have to work outside rain or shine, right? Everybody thinks my job is great. They're like, oh, you get lots of exercise, but repetitive movements are bad for you, not good for you. And when it's raining out and I live in the province with the most annual precipitation, it sucks, but you got to just kind of shake it off and be like, this is life. Tomorrow will be sunny and everything's good and I'm making money and that's it. <laughs> you right? know how it is right now we're gonna deal with now the way now is and tomorrow's tomorrow that's all yeah, you can do basically i mean yeah. and that's just it um 
you have to like i don't know I, to me you know i have my things that keep me going where i believe firmly you have to every day do at least one thing that sucks and, and just prepare your mind for what life is going to throw at you by doing something that no one else is even thinking about doing because then when something challenging gets thrown at you life happens you're prepared for it you're not so fragile that it's the end of the fucking world and you're so dramatic you know what i mean um i think people are looking for comfort too much rather than doing the hard shit um because the brain is hardwired to talk you out of doing anything that is uncomfortable or uncertain or you know scary um like i told you before off the air about my five second rule that everybody has and they don't realize it if your alarm clock goes off and you lay there for five seconds your brain is going to start giving you every reason why you should just stay in bed rather than get up and do what you have to do your brain will start going immediately to well you did kind of go to bed late last night you know it's freezing out there why get out of this warm bed like i get it i have like 500 dollars fucking egyptian cotton sheets and a duvet and shit i love my bed too you know what i'm saying but i have not used the goddamn alarm clock in 20 fucking years my passion wakes me up man i got shit to do you know what i'm saying i never accomplished nothing laying in bed yeah well, i had kids but you know <laughs> aside yeah. from that, you know no, it, that, that maybe <laughs> maybe not necessarily always took place in a bed either but um who knows who knows <laughs> i see i see it for in my point of view i see it as like yeah we are like as a as a culture that way but we weren't always culturally like that you know look at 100 years ago when you had to you had to like grow food to have enough food to get through the year so like i see it as a cultural disconnect and i see people being addicted to things that are instantly gratifying so like say i want to do something hard or something that sucks it's like do something that sucks but something that sucks because it's not pleasant to do but it's going to benefits you somewhere down the line in the future right exactly so like something that you can work at like so my motto what i say to myself a lot of the time when i got to do something that sucks but i know i have to do is uh not, nothing that was worth having ever came without a little bit of hard work right okay so like you know another example let's say you are sitting on the couch watching something and you, your mind reminds you like you, you know you just remember i gotta do laundry still if you sit there for five seconds thinking about that motherfucking laundry your mind is gonna say you know you can do it tomorrow you still got oh, some yeah. things that's what the mind does because laundry is not rewarding or fun let's be real um but you got shit to do so if you give yourself that five seconds for your brain to boot up and create a reason why you should just say fuck it, it's going to do just that. So when you get up in the morning, instead of laying there for five seconds, waiting for your brain to kick in and say, you know, maybe you don't need to do cardio today. Maybe you don't need to fucking do what's on your list of things. Is it really not gonna be there tomorrow? If you let yourself yeah. have that time, if you put your feet on the floor instead and get the fuck up, you, you've already started your day off with one win under your belt because you did the hard thing. Because it would have been a lot easier to sit there in your bed and say, fuck it, I'm going back to sleep. Fuck this shit. Yeah, I definitely have to get back into the cardio. We had that, uh, they had those forest fires south of the border here. And the air quality got super, super bad to the point where they told you it was basically like smoking a full pack of cigarettes just to go outside. And then I stopped jogging and now it's just like, I got to get back into it. And it's like, oh, and it's been like, a yeah, it's been a while, but that was, that was bad with the smoke here, man. And uh, I don't know if I told you, but I have one client that lives on a very small island. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. It. it felt like I was in the, uh, I was Bruce Campbell again. It was crazy. It was, it was totally it was like I was in a horror movie because it was like smoky log cabin, the whole thing. That was freaky anyways. Yeah, but but the that was like my excuse for like not going anymore. And then I just kind of like um, got busy with other things. And now I have to start back over in the beginning of making myself go because I'm out of the habit now. But that's not a good enough excuse to not do it at all. There you go. <laughs> you know, um, and that's the mentality. I mean, 
anyone that thinks I don't give a fuck, I'm 265 of muscle, but you know, and I lift stupid amounts of weight. But anybody that thinks it's not unpleasant is out of their tree. You know, just because I seem to enjoy it doesn't mean I'm you not. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's just like, oh, yeah, I could do that. No problem. Don't even break a sweat. It's crazy. But it's still, you know, you still get that lactic acid buildup where your muscles are burning. You're tiring yourself out. None of that shit. Nothing in your brain says this is fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you push through that, when your brain is trying to tell and your body is trying to say i can't do this shit anymore and your brain is saying just listen to the body don't do it but you keep fucking doing it the brain eventually says oh i guess you can keep doing it the body says okay you don't listen to me i have no authority here eventually the two get on the same page and the brain stops trying to talk you out of shit and says what else can we do let's find out what else we're capable of but you got to convince yeah, so, the brain. So I was struggling with that. And uh, I, I, I have like a kind of a martyr in my mind that I have for that now, whenever I get to that kind of conflict in my brain, which is Terry Fox, right? Because I went to Terry Fox Elementary School back in Ontario, back in Heart Lake. And so because our school was named after him, they made sure that they taught us about his legacy in that. Now, this is a guy who at 18 years old was diagnosed with cancer. They amputated his leg and then he decides he's gonna run across Canada. Like, I, I don't know, what, when I was 18, I was definitely not thinking about that. I was thinking about video games and smoking weed. And like, I, you know, this is a kid who decided to take on like the responsibility of all humanity and try and find a cure for something that was affecting everyone, you know? And, and uh, he did it through jogging. And so like for, if I, when I think about him and his legacy and, and I get, I'm getting tired jogging and I think I'm just doing this for me and I'm already like wimping out. Like this is the guy who's like half my age, who was half my age and he did it for everybody and he didn't quit until he actually died doing it. So that was like, for me, that was, he's like my, my inspiration guy, I think. I think because that's important yeah to have that i mean for me it's my son obviously yeah um every year that he was here um because they the, you know everyone knows by now i'm sure the doctors gave him two weeks to live and he lived to be two years old so each birthday no excuses i went into the gym and uh i did a bicep curl for every day that he fought to be here so 365 the first year straight. And then the next year I doubled that when he turned two and I only had an hour to do it before the gym was closing. So I had no real rest periods. And everyone that knows about his condition knows it caused seizures and shit. And when you're that little, especially, they're so taxing and painful on his little body. Mm -hmm. So as tiring as it was, as painful as my arms were at that point, there was no idea of stopping because it was like he didn't have the luxury of saying you know what this is exhausting and and painful so i'm just going to stop having seizures now that wasn't an option so i have no option we suffer together so i fucking worked through it and there's a video of it where my fucking arms are so full of blood that they're like fucking just swollen like a motherfucker and people are like jesus look at the arms on you i'm like dude that came from like you know um fucking over 700 uh reps straight <laughs> you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that'll do that um and even after i was done because i had time i threw in an extra 20 for his mother for all she had to go through you know i didn't stop at the uh you know I, I was closer to like 800 by the time i was fucking done so wow and then i went and couldn't barely lift my arms out you know for the next day because they're just so attacked yeah. exhausted <laughs> Um, but you know, and then nine days after doing that, he passed. So I, I was really glad yeah. that I didn't make excuses and not do it. But it goes to show when painful things happen in your life, they suck and they're hard, but you can turn it around and use it as something to propel you even more forward. Right. I, I can't think off the top of my head of anybody that has done fucking big things 
that didn't also have big issues. Oh, right. In life and big hardships in life and, and big disadvantages. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't name people that have done anything impressive that had everything handed to them. And any example, celebrity wise, that people try to pitch out there, tell me what they did that was impressive. You know what I mean? Because I know people yeah. are going to go for the safe bet of like, oh, Kardashians and blah, blah, blah. Okay, what did they do that was impressive? Because they haven't blown my fucking socks off yet. Anybody can have a reality show and bullshit because they fucking grew up rich. What have they done personally that's impressive? Right. They made a really bad TV show. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Impressively bad. Well, you know that. I'll give you that. That's stretch. Okay. I'll give it to you. Um, you know, but uh, they all have names that start with K. I don't know. That's they didn't even have it. They didn't even have any hand in that. That was not them at all. <laughs> like, you know, um, impressive amounts of plastic surgery, maybe. But uh, you know, do you remember that? Remember that uh, this is a little bit controversial. I gotta go there, but do you remember that juice, juicy Smollett thing? That guy that got arrested for faking that. Yeah. Do you know that his family was one of those I want to be famous? All my kids' family, like they were, they all had a TV show together, and. Wow, I did not. Yeah, know. All, him and all of his siblings, they all had to learn how to act and dance and play music, and because the whole plan was that they were gonna be like, like the Kardashians or like the the Wayans or like a, a famous family. That's fucking crazy. I didn't know that. I know, right? The kind of things you, you find when you go digging for information. Because I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to stuff like that. I want to know all the gruesome details about everything. But the only problem is there's so much bullshit out there. It's, sometimes it's hard to like figure out what's, what's going on. But he definitely was on a TV show. That was crazy. I don't know. Um, you would have had a blast with Ron Russell. He was on my show and it was fucking hilarious. And then when I went on their show... Um, so Ron Russell is like super fucking like old school Hollywood. He's 80 years old now and you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. He's super fucking hilarious. He's worked with legends like fucking you wouldn't believe. Um, and, uh, like everybody from like Sophia Loren and all of them, man, um, craziness, the amount of people he knows. In fact, he said his daughter grew up like super close friends with Angelina Jolie when she was a little kid. So he, oh, wow. he knows the family. Um, and, uh, you know, he knows so many fucking people. It's unreal. And he's married to Jimmy Starr, who's one of my good friends as well. So I'm on their show one day. And this is Ron right out the gate. First fucking question. You think Mick was bad? <laughs> Mick is tame, dude. First fucking thing when I get on the show, and this is a live show, Ron's like, all right, first fucking question. Fuck your bullshit, Jimmy. First question, how hung are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I cracked up and uh, we get into mentioning like my size 14 shoes. He's like, well, you know what they say about big feet? Bigger the feet, bigger the meat, you know? <laughs> big feet, big meat. And I'm like, I'm dying, dude. I'm laughing so fucking hard. You didn't uh, bring up tape <laughs> so then he's like uh he's like so where, where do we find the nude pictures and that's like check your inbox bro how do you think i got on this show <laughs> <laughs> but because they do it live there's a chat room of people and he's like some i don't remember who the woman was said uh in the chat room jimmy was like she wants to know if there's like a group chat she can get in on these fucking <laughs> <laughs> inboxes <laughs> and I laughed so fucking hard. It's like, my God, this is what I've gotten myself into right off the fucking bat. Uh, you know, that's Ron every time. He's hilarious. I love the guy. Uh, fucking amazing guy. Um, and Jimmy is fucking great. And uh, Jimmy and I, of course, discovered when he was on my show, we both have a love for like 80s horror. And he's got a fucking collection that like definitely rivals mine. He's got a oh, yeah. He's got like a six foot five Krampus fucking um, motion censored fucking Krampus figure that he got what? from Ron for his birthday. Um, oh, man. It's super cool. What uh, does it do? What is it? Motion sensor? What is it? Like when you walk by it and shit, it like the eyes light up and it moves and it like says shit. It's crazy. Oh, it's like 
animatronic type shit. You know, like when you go to like Spirit Halloween and shit, they got those like big display pieces. If you yeah, step it's on a the, diorama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if you step on the, the fucking pedal, it will come out and like start doing shit. It's one of those. Yeah. Um, and then talking to Joe Castro, who does all those like effects and masks and shit, this motherfucker rivals my collection in a, in a sense. He's got a Jason, like one of the original molds of the Jason mask from Freddy versus Jason signed by everyone. Uh, including fucking um, uh, what's her name? Fucking, of course, I draw a blank. Uh, who played Jason's mother in the original fucking Friday the 13th? I was like, damn, dude. Oh, I know who you're talking about, right? And for some reason, huge name, and I'm forgetting it. I like, of course, um, and like a bunch of horror movies, Jesse Palmer. That's the fucking one, okay? Um, yeah, so like, he's got everybody signed it, like Robert Englund, everybody, and I was like, that's tits, bro. Um, it's one of the original molds from that mask from the set and he's got it on the shelf i was like fuck dude (laughs) that's cool awesome and he gets to make all those things yeah that's the thing if you ever wanted to remake that mask you'd need that mold that's that's crazy to think that if it has to be reborn you're gonna take that thing off his shelf right (laughs) you know exactly and like he's done a lot of cool shit too um and uh so it's crazy to have these friends and shit so i definitely want him to do the mask i think either him or tom savini of course because he's fucking brilliant um savini's fucking like super brilliant with all that kind of shit did all the special effects for those fucking movies have you ever thought about what it would be? Have you ever heard of, uh, what is it, Lorraine Warren and her husband? Those, uh, oh, yeah, Ed. Normal. Have you ever seen their uh, museum that they have with the uh, supposed Annabelle doll? Like, apparently that stuff is all real and they have it, like, in some room somewhere. I happen to know that that doll, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was just bought by a celebrity really? ghost hunter. Yeah, celebrity ghost that hunter. That's scary. He's starting his. It was supposed to be kept in a really safe glass box and it was not supposed to come out so it wasn't going to kill anybody. No, he's leaving it there, but he's oh. he's got he's starting his own museum and I heard he just bought it. I'm not sure if that's uh, 100% accurate, but I'm pretty sure the sources are reliable. It always freaks me out that that doll is like a Raggedy Ann doll and my name is Ann. <laughs> just that always kind of freaked me out like why does it have to be a Raggedy Ann doll? <laughs> right? Imagine anyway. if, if I knew that story like way back, I'd be like, "Well, I don't know about you, man." <laughs> Anyone with that? <laughs> yeah. Raggedy Ann. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that would always be cool, especially since that uh, that movie recently came out. I didn't really like that. Did you see that Annabelle movie? Yeah, I I didn't really get into it as much as like um, Insidious was Not really cool. Great. Oh, Conjuring was dope as fuck, too. That was based on Ed Lorraine Warren's uh, research as well. I have a yeah. lot of stuff that came out from what they did. Anyways, I always thought it would be cool like, to go and see that uh, museum. I just um, had a ghost I just had a ghost hunter on my show uh, the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so that's going to come out soon. That's pretty cool. Uh, have you ever gone ghost hunting? I haven't, but I, she invited me to come out and do it, so... We used to go when we were kids. Uh, there was a place up by the Forks of the Credit. It's in no, it's in Port Credit, in Ontario, where uh, Sci Factor did this uh, research. There, where there's a there's a story of a guy who used to go visit his girlfriend, and he'd he'd go down this road. It's in the countryside, and he'd go through the farmer's field instead of taking a left or right because it was a T intersection, and the farmer was pissed off because the guy kept riding through his far his field. So he put up a barbed wire fence, and when the kid went to go through the field, he cut his head off. Damn. But I actually went there with a group of friends, right? And we're in this car. And what happens is you sit there for like an hour or two, and then all of a sudden you'll see this this light, and it kind of looks like a headlight of a motorcycle, but it like goes way up in the air, and it gets really, really bright, and then it just disappears. And that's that's pretty well. Th- that's pretty much it, all that happens. But the only other thing people say about it is there's like this rock there. Apparently, if you touch the rock, you get sick or whatever. I wasn't going to test that. I saw the light in the sky. It freaked me out. I was good. 
but yeah, going ghost hunting, there's a couple, there's, there's a few freaky places around if, if you search, because like there's, there's history, yeah. Yeah, I, I used to live in Niagara Falls for a while, and Niagara on the Lake was a pretty fucking heavy place to go to, because you would hear stories about places that are like allegedly fucking super haunted. And then you look at some of the buildings and shit, you're walking down like those stone roads, like the cobblestone roads, and you look at some of these old ass buildings, especially as it's getting dark, and you're like, yeah, I could see that, you know, like, it, it just, yeah. there's a vibe there where you're like, looking at the place, you're like, yeah, probably, you know, there's something fucked up in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a college in Mimico, it's Humber College now, but it used to be like a hospital. And it has all these underground hallways, so that the doctors used to be use them to to go between the different uh, buildings when it was winter time, when it was cold outside. And now it's a Humber College dorm, and apparently it's one of the most uh, haunted places in in the Ontario area. Damn. It's like it's like a ghost of this little girl that keeps like showing up in different places in the property. So it's it's all dormitories now because there's 12 buildings, but they used to be 12 different uh, divisions of a hospital. And the building in the middle has a huge smokestack because it was an incinerator. They used to use it for burning medical waste, okay. i.e. body parts and stuff, right? right? Oh, my God. We were, all, we were all little horror nut kids, right? So you used to go to all these places and see what we could find. But that ghost road, that one... The first one I told you was the only one where we actually saw definitive evidence of there actually being something there. Yeah, I, I, man, I'm getting invited to do so much shit over in the U.S. So I got invited to do a ghost hunt when everything's opened up and shit. And of course, it will be filmed. So that'll be cool. I'm like, sure, I'll do it. And they're like hardcore, like they have the equipment and shit. And uh, they go pretty hard, man. Um, you know, they're serious about this shit. This is what they do. And I don't know if you've seen the show Ghost Hunters, but this woman yeah. is friends with all those people. Like she knows all of them um, and has worked with them. So it's one of those kind of deals. So you might see me on that shit at some point. Who knows? I mean, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm just doing stuff. <laughs> just dumping on shit. Like, sure, I'll do it. I'll just pour myself out. Why not? <laughs> right on. It's the way to do it. I don't know. Hey man, but you also know, really sit around and play video games for a month. Well, I, you know, and, it, and it's kind of like one of those things. Like, who else gets these opportunities? How many people do you know get these opportunities? To turn it down would be fucking foolish, you know. Because yeah. you get to experience cool shit. So why not? You know, I, I think it'd be kind of stupid to uh, be like, no, I don't feel like experiencing something new today. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, lots of people are like that, though. Yeah, but, but I feel like they're going to regret it. Well, it's you got a choice if you want to make yourself into a high-performance human or if you want to hang out and watch TV. I mean, that's the difference. That's Everybody gets their choice in life, right? You, everybody gets the gift, and you get to choose what you want to do with it. Right. You know, and that's what I said. It was like the money thing was always nice, but... I'll take the experiences over like material shit anytime because no one can take that from you. You can't piss that away. You know, the only thing that's going to make you forget all that's Alzheimer's, but you know, still, <laughs> you know, do what you can in the meantime. Money is not going to make you happy without the personal relationships that really create meaning in your life. Exactly. And experiencing yeah. things and memories and shit are like, the one thing, that's why I always tell people, like, now being in my 30s, I'm like, dude, travel when you can. Because that's, that's the most fun shit. Because you'll never forget that stuff. Um, you're not going to remember what you bought last month. You know, what material shit you bought. You'll look at something. Oh, yes, I, I bought a new truck and trailer last month. I am so happy with it. I am not going to forget that. You know how I don't have to take the lawnmower out of the truck every day. I can lock it up in the trailer and go take a shower. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, that's a bit different, but you know. I remember that one. <laughs> for the most part, like material shit. Eventually there's gonna come a time where you look at it and be like, I don't remember when the fuck I bought this. You know, I'll find things where I'm like, when the fuck did I get this? You know what I mean? Like Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. So, you know, but traveling and experiencing new things, you never forget that shit. No. 
it's good to see other people's cultures because it gives you a different perspective on life in the world you know if if the people that don't travel kind of end up with a bit of a corner perspective on the world right just from like where you live but that's a very small piece of of everything right i mean you know i don't I don't spend my weekends going around fucking pretending to see shit that's paranormal, but I'll go ghost hunting. Fuck it. Why not? You know what I mean? If, if I'm invited to do it, sure. You know, oh, yeah. I've been invited to go to like Hollywood events for um, like one event a friend of mine does. It's like a bit of a film festival mixed with like a party mixed with all sorts of shit. Right. So I'm like, fuck yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, come out, you know, for that. I'm like, sure um then being invited to come out for the premiere of a fucking horror movie i'm like of course you know like why wouldn't i so you know if you were to tell me at 16 or 18 or even 20 like i'm gonna get to do all this crazy shit i'd be fuck you you know (laughs) you know what i mean like don't fucking piss on my leg and tell me it's raining bro yeah i wouldn't you but here we are so why would i turn it down and be like nah i you know i'm just gonna sit at home and do fuck all (laughs) you know what i mean like your choice you get to do what you want that's for sure it just feels ungrateful at that point you know you get you know i've had both ends of the spectrum i've had fucking nothing and then i've been able to do whatever the fuck i want um you have to appreciate what you have because especially uh you know and you know my history so you know i've literally had nothing in my life at points so i think for me now it's like my mentality is always my back is always against the fucking wall it's like either i am the best at what i do in every fucking thing i do or else it's back to having nothing that's you know what keeps me going i always remember the hard fucking shit when i'm getting big opportunities because it helps me to appreciate those opportunities and realize how special they are and um not take them for granted and not uh half-ass anything you know what i mean so Mm. I think it's important to remember where you come from and never fucking forget that shit and never forget nothing's owed to you. And that uh, just because you earn something doesn't necessarily mean it's owed to you. Uh, It just means when you, it's a reminder of when you bust your ass and you give everything 110%, these doors open for you. So, I I mean, I always tell them the military is like the best thing that never happened to me. You know what I mean? Because here I am doing this when that's what I thought I really wanted to do. But then the wait list was so long, it forced me to do something else. Yeah. So here I am now with these opportunities because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've got to, you've got to make sure that you're choosing for yourself. What I find in life so many times is people try and have someone else choose good stuff for them and then they get to go and do whatever they want. Right. Yeah, you know, and that that's never good. It, that it doesn't work that way. No, You've not, got to put the work in yourself. It, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of doing what I do and being with the mindset that I have is that like if I, I, I've gotten to the point where I can have whatever and it's great. So if I don't enjoy something, I'm just not going to fucking do it anymore. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. And people will be like, but you're famous now. Blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck. The second I don't enjoy this, I'm done. You know, what right. I, mean? I don't give a fuck. I appreciate everybody, yeah. you know, support. I appreciate my fans and shit. But if this becomes soul sucking, I'll just go back to obscurity rather than fucking suffer through it. Or I'll fucking be known for something else, you know, that I do enjoy. It's just that easy. That's who I am. I don't sell myself out. I find I get bored of shit. And then I have, it's not that I, it's not that I find that it sucks. It's that I've done it. I know how to do it. And now I want to do something else. So for me, I, I, I reach a ceiling in whatever I'm doing. So for me, in, like for me in landscaping, right? Like I, 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 I learned a lot working up through just being in working. That's mostly how I learned the beginning of what it, and then I took my red seal because I wanted to know the rest of it. And now just being a worker is not enough. I have to like figure out how to do the business of it. But I've noticed for myself, it's always like, I create new levels for myself to reach, right? But if you don't do that for yourself, then you're not going to progress. You have to see it, see it for yourself where you want to go before exactly. you're going to be able to get there. Just like if you're going to make a sandwich, you're going to like envision like, okay, bread, lettuce, blah, blah, blah. You got to envision what your recipe of your future is going to be, right? Well, exactly. Like I always tell people, man, uh, once you reach the top of a mountain, 
find a bigger one, start climbing because otherwise, you know, where do you go from there? You sit up there and twiddle your fucking thumbs and someone else is coming to take your spot. You know, right. someone's going to be hungrier than you and want to take what you do to some next level shit. And now you're like out, you're obsolete, you know, because someone went fucking, you know, drive you at a business basically. You're way more competitive than I am. I'm like totally about the community. I'm like inclusive. I'm like, bring everyone in. Every Like two heads are better than one. And you're like, no, this is my spot. <laughs> well, no, no. Like for me, it's also the same thing where it's like, when I reach the top of a mountain, I plan to climb the next one and challenge myself further. But the first thing I'm going to do is throw some ropes down and be like, there's room for more of you motherfuckers up here. This is how I did it. This is why I encourage people. This is why I give advice because i want to see people succeed and stop making excuses for themselves but don't think i'm going to be sitting up here because i got some more shit to do you know what i mean like i got to keep chasing something um right it's just who i am i'm hardwired because like i said i've had nothing so now that i can do all this shit it's like what else can i do what else can i accomplish what else interests me because that's what, what it comes down to is if something interests me i'm going to chase it because i realize that the only time I can't do something is if I tell myself I can't. It doesn't matter what other people say. You know, I've, I'm sure I've had a lot of people fucking thought it was hilarious when I said I was going to get into MMA and shit like that. And now everywhere they go on the internet, they see my fucking name and get salty as fuck. You know what I mean? Because here I am and here and they're in the same spot in life that they were 25, 30 years ago, you know, doing fucking nothing or haven't accomplished shit and they're well into their 50s now. You know what I mean? And it must suck. But, you know, I appreciate being told I won't be shit because that's what drove me to do it. Well, I got to a point where I looked at it like if I don't actually like put my bet in and actually make an attempt or try, then I'm definitely going to fail. Right. Exactly. It's like if you if you try to do something and, and make something like a company or a business or just I don't know, whatever it is that you're interested in. If you have a dream and you you try it and and you totally fail, you can at least come back and say, well, at least I put the effort in, exactly. right? But if I just looked at myself like if I reach fifty or sixty and I I, I can't say to myself that I actually tried, then I'm gonna have a reason to be depressed. <laughs> exactly, and I always view it as like, dude, do you want to go to your deathbed and be like, there's so much shit I could have attempted and possibly have done and never even tried? and have that regret to take with me or do i want to be able to look back and be like man i really did some shit <laughs> you know what i mean like i want my kids to be able to look at everything i've done and be like man pops did some fucking shit in his time like there's no reason i can't you know it, with the start he had if he could do all this crazy shit there's no reason i can't like become the doctor i want to be or whatever the fuck it is you know um or a mechanic or whatever the fuck they want to do. I don't expect my kids to follow my footsteps and do what I chose to do. Um, that's what interested me. And uh, whatever they want to do, I, I just want them to do it the best of their ability. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's all you could ask for. If you're enjoying it, because nobody um, that does what they hate doing just to make a paycheck has gone to their deathbed saying, man, I really wish I worked more. You know, I wish I spent more time at my job. Um, yeah. You know, they, they say, fuck, I wish I pursued the things I really wanted to do because life is so damn short. Um, so I'm blessed to be able to fucking say I enjoy every damn thing I do. I, I get to do what I love. And, you know, um, it's nice change from where I was at a bunch of years ago. Um, so it's been a crazy five years so far and it seems to just keep snowballing into more opportunities and i'm like fuck yeah i'll jump on it i don't want to stay in one spot for the rest of my fucking life you know what i mean like it's fun man <laughs> right on. well i can see the battery on my phone is starting to go down uh -oh. i think i've only got about 15 to 20 percent left so i'm just giving you the warning I don't want to just disappear in front of your eyes. Right. Well, <laughs> it, you know, after mixed display, I thought you would be more creative about how you get out of here. Um, it's hard to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you about my big dump that I have to go take. Oh, no, no. The best part is after we doing this meal plan, anyone that's eating these foods that I'm saying, just eat these and don't eat these. 
It's all about the, the absolutely horrible dumps that you get, which is great, but they're fucking black. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways, if you want to have the absolute worst shits of your life, take, take uh, Keith's advice. It's amazing. <laughs> what the fuck have y'all been doing to yourselves? It causes me. No, I'm telling you. The last person who I had on this uh, clean food eating diet, I didn't even say anything to her because <laughs> you're because I told you I was like these are these shits are epic, right? Anyway, didn't even say anything. She comes up to me and she's like, and she's like, it's black. My poop is black. I've never been. She's like, I think it's because of all that microwave shit I was eating. <laughs> it's all finally coming out of me. I swear to God, she said that to me. It was so funny. I was like, I have the same thing, right? Yeah, no, because I think what it is 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 the water weight. Because we had a discussion about like the weight loss and everything. And the first thing that comes off is water weight because it's the first thing that you shed. Anyways, apparently it comes out in the form of like putrid black feces. <laughs> it's so gross. But it feels great once it's out of you. <laughs> I, I don't even own a microwave and I haven't for fucking so many years. So, I mean, I'm glad. Uh, we have one, but it's in the garage. Because the only there's only one person who uses it for reheating coffee. Oh, I don't know why people reheat coffee with a microwave. It's so gross. Burns it. It's gnarly. Why? Like, oh, come on. The person who does that. We just, we have one, but I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so all this time, basically, all people are going to take from this is that every guest I have talks about shit. <laughs> <laughs> the part I like, man. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Fucking Mick. Like, I got, I, I'd love to carry this on, buddy, but, uh, you know, th this is Mick. I'd love to carry this on, but I got to go take a big hairy dump. <laughs> That's fucking Mick for you. Like, thanks, brother. I needed to know. Uh, that image will be burned in my mind for at least the rest of the day, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Those four to six year olds with the what love is. Love is when mommy can go in the bathroom while daddy's taking a dump and she doesn't think it's gross. <laughs> That's true love right there. <laughs> Birds to live by. This is how Anne wants to close the show with if you really love somebody, get in that shit house with them. You know what Prove the funny it. part is? The funny part is, in my relationship, I really don't have a problem being in the same room with him when he's taking a dump, but he's he's self-conscious and embarrassed about it, so I'm not allowed. <laughs> this is going to be the best birthday ever for my cousin. She's going to hear all about my balls and people's dumps. Like, that's what she's going to take birthday, away. Cousin. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Well, before your battery dies and we right talk about more gnarly dumps, thanks for coming. Better now. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. It was such a pleasure to be uh, on your show. Dude, it's been so much fun. We got to do that again. Um, yeah. I've known you, you so damn long. I owe it to you to at least for putting up with my bullshit. Um, <laughs> I don't have do anything. I give my time. We'll do an entire show about shitting one day, just so you can get it out of your system. <laughs> you remember that I used to have a book called How to Shit in the Woods? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> uh, you know, probably. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. It was a camping guide. It was it was literally directions on how to shit in the woods. Knowing you, it was hardcover, too, because you take that very seriously. It wasn't, but I didn't have a choice on that one. It wasn't available in part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. I'm glad I could be entertaining for, for something. <laughs> we'll try and pick another topic for next time. A little would, cleaner than shit. I would hope so. <laughs> but then look what I'm wearing. It's all, Mick. it's all Mick's fault. <laughs> Everything's always Mick's fault. <laughs> Fuck Mick. <laughs> all right thanks so much this was a blast okay, bro. have a great rest of your weekend thanks you too don't work too damn hard out there oh you know i will i'm going right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right okay have a great day thank you take you, it easy you too <laughs> ciao so that cluster that mess <laughs>
<laughs> was Nick Strawn and Nick Benson, who was a cool guy, and uh, Ann McGillis, like I said, long-term, way back high school friend of mine, that we got a lot of history, man. And so when Mick and Nick took off, her and I decided to continue the conversation. Had a great time. It was nice getting caught up and uh, getting a little insight from someone that's known me so long. Pretty crazy stuff, man. We had a blast. We had a lot of laughs. I hope you did too. And, uh, you know, you always know when Mick comes on the show, there's a lot of vulgarity and ball busting because that's what we do, damn it. And we have fun doing it. So there will be many more with Mick. He's usually a, a favorite amongst the listeners. Thanks for checking out the show, and I'll catch your asses later, man.